Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to the random show. Those of you who are here tuning in live, I do appreciate you for locking in once again. Random show settings. Hope you are well wherever you lovely me people may be. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Random show back again with our your host, Agostino Zinger. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing swimmingly. I really really do hope you are doing well how am i you know hanging in there hanging in there for dear life i'm not gonna lie hanging in there for absolute dear life but i hope you guys are well wherever you may be i hope you really are that's the main thing big up the stream chat for tuning in um and big up everybody else for joining in later on down the line if that is the case big up everybody for tuning in appreciate everyone that's gonna be here <clears throat> bubbly, 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 um, I want to pick up Uche actually, just a quick one. So I just recently checked this out, right? Um, the trailer for Esther Pavitsky's new movie called Drugstore June. Uh, big up Uche for the you know for what you call it reminding everybody in the Discord about this again. Um, do not delay if you want to be part of the Discord. We got over a hundred, a hundred, a hundred psychos and weirdos in that Discord who love to talk shit and whatever and fuck around and joke around. So if you want to join a little community of people that like to talk about good or fun shit, then obviously go over to the fucking Discord. Link should be in the description. If it isn't, let me know and I'll give you a new one. But it should be in the description. But Uche posted this in the flipping discord i'm not going to play it because i don't know how weird people get with fucking trailers um you know i don't know if it's going to get blocked but check it out if you haven't already it's called drugs or june and i've got to be honest it's really good man it's actually quite good again it's a trailer it's a two minute trailer it's quite long it includes maybe some of the best bits in the movie in there so it's maybe it's a little bit you know it gives away too much it gives away probably a little bit too much of the plot but as you know in consideration of what we've seen from other comedians I think this might be, this looks really good. This this actually looks better than fucking, um, what you call it, Burt Kreischer's thing. It looks actually quite decent, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of giving me vibes of like Juno and Superbad. I'm getting like Juno and super bad feelings um, from watching Drugs or June in terms of the, you know, the overall, you know, aesthetic vibe, humor of the show, of the movie itself. Obviously, there's cameos from loads of big comedians on there. You see Bobby Lee. There was Bill Burr there earlier. Um, what you call it? Um, bad Babies on there as well. Um, you got those twins that were viral for a bit. Obviously, you got, um, who's this? I don't think that's Esther P, is it? I don't, I don't know who that is. Um, You've got good cameos on this in general. So she's got all her comedic friends on there. So it does look really funny. I'm not going to lie. It looks absolutely hilarious. So I'm actually looking forward to checking this out when it does eventually come out. Um, there's no release date, I don't think, so far. It says coming soon. I don't know when it's going to be actually coming out. But it does look quite decent. It does absolutely quite decent. So I don't mind this. I'm not going to lie. I don't really mind this. Um, check it out if you haven't already. Drugstore June, Esther Pavitsky. Um, it looks quite decent. What it says here? Um, the blurb here says after a pharmacy in her small town is robbed, June Esther Pavitsky, who still lives at home with her parents in Beverly D'Angelo and James Rima, takes matters into her own hands to solve the crime while at the same time trying um to get over her ex boyfriend, Harley Joe, whatever his name is, and um, become more of an adult a diverse multi-platform kind of so yeah the plot seems really fun um looks far better looks a lot better than the machine even just in the trailer form of it even if it does end up just dropping on fucking um netflix or something later on it does look like a fun movie i'm not going to lie it actually does look like a really fun movie so i am actually curious to check this out when it does actually come out so um this looks good man this looks good this was really good. So big up Esther Pavitsky. This is like a decent movie. For once, we've got a decent one. You know how these comedians, you know, they put out fucking, you know, they get a chance at the big time and they fucking just fuck it up. So this is actually quite encouraging to see that this is quite decent. So check it out if you haven't already. The trailer looks quite dumb. The trailer looks quite good, not dumb, sorry. Um, What you call it? Flagrant slip there. The trailer looks quite interesting. So check it out if you haven't already. Moving on quickly want to mention quickly want to mention this um most of you guys know i'm obsessed with in a weird way 
you know, um, seeing the downfall of flipping DSP, right? He's a garbage human being, one of the worst streamers in the world, and definitely somebody who I think um, does not deserve any part of the fucking fan base or the dedicated loyal fan base he fucking has and that you shouldn't really have him in the slightest but we know they're fucking dense and stuff and vulnerable people and he obviously takes advantage of them anyway that being said um you know pun intended there is a huge documentary coming out about dsp very very soon um directed by mike clum who's responsible for the boogie documentary which was really good um in that you know Bo boogie was obsessed with you know he's obsessed with himself and he loves being a victim so he was willing to just you know make himself look like an idiot but i think the documentary was really good in terms of kind of showing you know what boogie is like and obviously i think more so shining a light on locales and kind of you know displaying why people like myself quote unquote detractors why we are fascinated with them and why we hate them and why you know maybe their fans also love them right because it's a weird it's this weird sort of like hope that people maybe have that they're going to change i don't really know anyway um dsp's going to do one i think a dsp documentary will end up being a lot bigger um than the boogie one just because he's such a deplorable human being and um, there's so many other lanes you can kind of go down and just because of how weird he is right socially he's a bit of a shut-in as well so i think we're gonna see we're gonna get a lot more out of the boogie one sorry the wings one sorry we're gonna get a lot more out of the dsp one than we did out of the boogie one so i think it's gonna be really good um but there's been some weird stuff going on beforehand i feel like there's been a concerted effort by Mike Clum and DSP to try and rewrite the narrative on himself in real time. It's really strange. And I don't understand why, because he is who he is. But you're seeing DSP doing some weird things on his streams, you know, how he's acting, how he's talking, where he's basically trying to maybe, you know, in real time change how he is so he doesn't appear as to be such a weirdo um, in the in the documentary. And one of the things that you we've seen him obviously do now, which is a big change, has been suddenly out of the blue he reintroduced cat back on his streams and cat is his wife we haven't seen her for a while she appeared you know i'm thinking like five or six years ago and she got absolutely destroyed in the fucking comments and shit because of how she looks and whatnot because of her makeup look like you know that scene in fucking the simpsons where marge has that gun and shoots herself to do her makeup and shit right um she just looks a bit horrible and stuff and obviously people are questioning the logic of you know a woman you know basically being in a marriage with dsp in the first place you know big up stinger good appreciate you brother whoopsie i didn't put the fucking thing on did i one second I'll, I'll replay apologies for that i'll replay it now audio for the let's replay that because i didn't have my fucking thing on will it replay I love how it doesn't replay the actual text. Anyway, long day, um, random show needed in my life. Thank you so much for um, the super chat, my friend. So um, what was I saying about Kat? So Kat hasn't been in the stream for a while. Um, and obviously DSP suddenly brought her back the other day. And I feel like this is obviously a concerted effort to try and repaint the narrative and obviously maybe to get Kat to be a bit more comfortable in front of camera. But it also felt a little bit exploitative because watching them talk on stream is pretty obvious that cat has some developmental issues or maybe something you know i don't know what it is i don't again i'm not gonna psychoanalyze her but i'm just going to observe and she's clearly like not all there as a person a little bit it's a bit strange because at one point when i was watching them talk to each other it felt like oh like you're seeing two people who are perfect for each other because they both have the same mannerisms. They speak the same way. She basically has the same opinions as him on certain things and whatnot. You almost felt like it felt kind of oddly cute that they were so similar. But then the more you started to watch and hear them speak, the more you started to see DSP interrupting and not letting her finish her thoughts and stuff, it almost felt like a bit of a manipulative relationship where he's kind of pigmatized his wife. Like... And she's basically turned into like a female version of him over the years and stuff. It doesn't really have much of her own personality. That's kind of what it kind of felt like. I swear to God, it's not really, it didn't really fill me with glee. If anything, it kind of made me sad. I mean, that he's turned himself into a shut-in. He's made her into a shut-in because if DSP doesn't have any friends, it's fairly certain that she doesn't have any friends. So, you know, they stay in the same house together, not really going out, um, no real social life. Um, Yo, big up Nadav, appreciate you, brother. Thanks for all your work and entertainment, brother. Big up Nadal for the super chat. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. Um, entertainment is one thing, 
But obviously, if I'm if you guys are not here watching, then there's no point in me doing these things. So I do appreciate you for tuning in, bro. So thank you, Nadav Drury, for the super chat, my G. Big up, big up, big up. So um, yeah, I just felt really sad watching it. It kind of made me feel sad. I'm not going to lie. It kind of made me feel fucking sad um, to see DSP and his wife and how they interact. It's a very strange relationship. I'll play a bit of the clip for you now um, from this live stream. They did it in two parts and shit. And then obviously I'm going to give you more of my thoughts on the other side. But just watch kind of how they interact and talk. It's very odd. I think so anyway. Um, I hated all the factions. They were boring. Um, the game got very repetitive. There was no nothing unique about it. Um just nothing about the game the story i'm not gonna go into the story the story's awful <laughs> wow um everything about the game is awful yeah in sadly. truth i think i like the game better than her and I it was like and it, it was all. my most disappointing no. game of the year on my countdown and i think she liked it better than or i liked it better than her yeah. so that that says something i can't even think of one good thing to say about it all right i just don't like it Oh, uh, let's see here. We have so much to get through, guys. Please bear with us because we got to get through a bunch of tips and a bunch of shout outs here on this YouTube side as well. Obviously, that was the one of the main reasons why she came back on stream, right? He used her as a human shield, a manipulation tactic, and obviously as a form of ways to get more sympathy bucks from the dense right she was basically on stream to get more sympathy bucks hey here's my wife be nice to her she hasn't been on stream for a while and obviously to get more sympathy bucks from the fucking dents pretty awful i'm not going to lie five dollar tip from andre best wishes to you in the upcoming year and i accidentally scrolled down this touchpad stinks uh i have a question i'm having a bowl of mint ice cream make chocolate chip ice cream what's your favorite ice cream or yogurt what's your favorite flavor of ice cream um yo like I wish I could say the word I want to say, but why do people ask these questions? Especially his fans. Why does he get these weird questions? I wish I could say the slur and the insult that I want to say now, but Mama Susan or whoever's in charge of YouTube is going to take down my fucking channel if I do. But you know what I'm thinking. You know the word that I'm fucking thinking. But why does he get these absolutely... What are these brain-dead fucking questions? Who are these people? Like... What's happening here? Do they fucking type with like an implant or something? Like, what's happening here? Huh? Like, do they like say words with gestures and shit? Like, what's happening here? Can somebody fucking explain? Oops, what's happening here? Why is it not? Oh, no sound. Either that or cookie dough ice cream ah. is good too. Chocolate chip cookie dough. For, for me and of course one thing we know for certain after watching this is that cat is incredibly fat now unfortunately so the difference from her um when they first got together until now is pretty startling but one thing that's really evident about this is really strange is that you've the way you, i don't know if you watch a lot of dsp content but he talks he doesn't talk that glowingly about fat people he has some very opinionated views on fat people especially when he speaks about boogie he speaks about wings he's not very like understanding he's not very compassionate to the plight of bigger people so i find that very interesting when he lives with somebody that is legitimate whale you know like he's so critical of like wings and boogie for being fat but his own wife is a literal you know she looks like a hippo unfortunately right she's turned into one over the years which again is no surprise and obviously puts into question this whole adage of like oh i eat healthy we eat really healthy we don't eat out too much it's like no you don't your wife is a clear example of it this is what happens like this is the this is the this is the proof that you need that ordering dude doordash you know for three days of uh, uh, you know three times per day isn't a good idea especially if you don't have any friends especially if you don't exercise eventually it's going to fucking come you know the, the fucking the chickens are going to come to roost i also love how they kind of both have the same bald patch right the thinning of the hair is kind of happening in the same type of place you can kind of see it here right feel with the oddly shaped head right look at that i love the fucking bug eyes but they kind of got the same kind of bald patch as well they're oddly quite pale too so he doesn't get any sun she doesn't get any sun no no even tells tanning or anything that's pretty evident one thing i think is different though i do think cat's makeup again i'm not a makeup fucking expert but i do think she looks better makeup wise i think when we first saw her on stream it did look a little bit paint by numbers yeah right? it looked like she did her makeup like using fucking watercolor or something but this actually looks pretty she looks pretty decent in her face and the funny thing is you know what's really funny you know the meme about tyrone there's this meme that goes around, right, that, you know, that DSP's a cuck and his wife, you know, is getting fucking plowed by some black dude somewhere that she kind of secretly is in love with. But you know what's really funny? 
she actually looks like the kind of woman that would be with the black dude now more than she did before. With like, you know, the big white woman with like that kind of hairstyle, right? <laughs> like she's usually got some dude, some dreadhead or someone, right? That is like holding her down or something. Usually. That's what she kind of looks like. She actually looks like she could have a Tyrone now. Before I didn't believe it, but now she definitely looks like a black dude is like, you know, you know, walking behind her because she's got like a big fat ass or something because of all the weight, not because of it's being actually round or something. That's actually the funny thing I saw. I was like, you know what? She looks like a lot of the baby mums you see here in London, um, you know, with little mixed race kids. Like you see them walking down the street <laughs> with a pram by themselves, of course, because the guy's on a runner. And it's just her with her, with her three little mixed race babies. It's like, oh, I'm blessed. You got your designer babies, but at what cost? You know? <laughs> designer babies, but you're all alone. You got kids in fucking Air Force Ones and little gold chains, but, you know, fucking, what do you call it? Jermaine, Tyrone, Nathan is nowhere to be found. First of all, I barely eat ice cream, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I've already told you guys, I'm half lactose intolerant. If I, I eat... I barely eat ice cream. She, she eats it all. <laughs> dairy, I get very gassy, right? But if I eat ice cream, usually I try to have something with chocolate, but I do like mint flavors as well. So I've loved mint chocolate chip. One that I used to eat when I was young and I haven't had in a hundred years is pistachio ice cream. Mm -hmm. I bet I would really like that if I had my hands on it, but I haven't had it in so long. Uh, $5 tip. Oh. From Tony Salami. We should do co-op games. Fucking no. Look at the members. Look at the members he has now. This is one of the this is one of DSP's greatest scams. For some reason, he has 1,179 paid subscribers, members on his channel. But if you watch his streams live, if it's unless it's a really big hype game, he won't get more than 500 live viewers. More than that. And if you look at his channel, his videos barely sometimes crack a thousand views, right? They're kind of like in a thousand to five grand kind of views wise. And most of it, you reckon, is probably from detractors. So the funny thing is that this is only being inflated since YouTube introduced gifted memberships. Before gifted memberships didn't exist, he hovered, he basically stayed around the 200 to 300 mark. So I think most likely DSP does have a fan base of 200 to 300 people who would be willing to pay 3.99 per month to like subscribe to his channel. But for some reason, DSP has fans, he's dense, are so invested in trying to make it look like he's successful that they will purposely buy soccer, you know, gift people memberships, like fifth, I think the other day OIC gifted 200 memberships and then give them to sock accounts to inflate his numbers. So they, they make socks, they buy loads of gifted memberships and but it doesn't it's not reflective of his actual fan base it's just to kind of make him feel like a big dog and of course align his pockets because you know what's that 400 memberships is like what that's like 800 dollars or some shit right it's a lot of money that's kind of come in at the end of the month but i always find this thing to be so dumb and meaningless because when you watch the, when the gifted subs end they all drop off a cliff like he doesn't have a good retention rate he was his his retention rate might be less than five percent when somebody gets 50, he barely holds them on. So it's like, what's the point of getting gifted memberships? Obviously, they're all going to bots. But then if, even if they don't go to bots, watching his content for a month, there's no way you can watch his content for a month and feel like three ninety nine justifies being a membership, being a member of his channel because it's all fucking terrible. But I find this to be such a funny scam, even more so than the tips because it's like, what's the point? We watch your streams. We know it's not entertaining. Together, it could be a great addition for the future. I guess at this point, since since obviously now we've been on stream for like 20 minutes and already no one's even asked the question, I guess we'll answer a question like, why are we here together tonight? So many why tips, tonight? so much money. And what are our plans? Mm. All right. So in a nutshell, all right, Kat has told me over mm -hmm. the years that she's wanted to come back on stream, but it was she was looking for the right time. Now, what no, you were looking for the right time to line your pockets. And this is the perfect time to land in pockets. And most likely, I reckon Mike Clum had a word and maybe there was a, a discussion or an agreement made to have her on stream now to get her more comfortable being in front of camera and talking about certain things. And maybe this footage will be included in the fucking documentary. Or maybe it's one of those ploys, like maybe he wanted to put her on the stream, then have people obviously say loads of negative things about her. And then that stuff gets included in the documentary because they're going to, you know, people like myself are going to say, oh, she's fucking fat now. And then that all is going to be included in the documentary about, oh, look how I'm a big victim. Everybody's coming after because I think one of the things that people miss 
about the whole low cows thing and i think i don't think most people miss it but one thing that i've basically realized um you know after following dsp for a bit and obviously some boogie and wings things is that the things that i feel embarrassed about for them is the things that they actually like about themselves so i think they do enjoy because you know i would be embarrassed and ashamed to like be portraying myself as a victim but they enjoy being victims because that's what makes them um their money basically right and keeps them in somewhat levels of notoriety like it's actually good it's a good thing so i think even though dsp documentary won't be as maybe bad as boogie in terms of what it makes him look like he's he enjoys leaning into the fact that he's a victim he enjoys being that you know he's basically a what you call it he's kind of a one of the hates people on fucking the meat in, in kind of detractor world. He kind of enjoys it. So I think from watching this little fucking back and forth with his wife and other bits and bobs, I'm almost certain the documentary will be an entire victim fest, mostly. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be, hey, look at this guy. He's a prolific streamer. He streams all the time. He works nine to f all this nonsense, right? He makes all his money, but he's also one of the most hated people in the world. You know, I think that's what's going to happen. Was there a reason particularly why you felt now was the right time of any time? Because well, remember, it was, it's always been an op literally an open door policy. She could have yeah. come in here at any time for any stream. I always told her that. Well, I think over the years, things have changed. Like, you know, the first time I was on here, truthfully, I just didn't know how to deal with all the negative stuff. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard if you're not used to it every day, you know? Now, I mean, it's happened so much that... I just don't care anymore. I've learned to not care about what the troll... Like, I know there's trolls watching this, and I know there's trolls restreaming it, and I don't give a shit. I just don't care. Like, I... The best thing you can do is just focus on the positive. <laughs> they sound the same. Focus on the positive. <laughs> and that's what I want to do. I don't care what people say. I know there's people that say, you know, oh, I'm... They say things, like, about my weight and stuff. Like, that's a big thing they've been saying. And... Mm, it's definitely a big thing that's for sure big big in more ways than one you just gotta laugh at it yeah. uh, before i couldn't laugh at it and i didn't want to come back on here because it was so upsetting the first time i did but since i mean it's been like what five years now and it's kind of like everything else the first time it happens it's shocking yeah the second time it happens okay well it, it still hurts but yeah. it's not as shocking but the one millionth time it happens exactly. it's like who gives a shit anymore right. right like all right say what you're gonna say she literally hasn't been on a stream in five years and if those people still haven't shut the fuck up about it right they're never going to so who cares what it but I, 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 it would be interesting to know though what she does feel about the begging maybe that's gonna be a documentary you'll be interested to know as like a partner like how does it feel to know that your husband just sits on live streams begging people for tips and donations to pay for your dates and stuff and your groceries and your DoorDash orders. Like, how does that make you feel? Are you not embarrassed that you have like a panhandler as a husband? Like uh, that, I'd be actually love to hear that. Again, maybe not worded in that way because that's not going to get a good answer, but it would be actually interesting to know like what she actually thinks about that like day to day. Like your husband actually begs for fucking money online from people. Like how does that, how do you feel? Are you okay with that? What they say at this point, right? Right. So, so there you go. <laughs> All right. So Tony asking, will we ever do co-op? Well, it's been a, a discussion, you know, some things that we would consider doing. And one of the things, and we're just going to throw this out there and we'll anyway that's it from that um my final feelings on this is that i feel like this was a manipulation tactic um it wasn't done in a sincere or genuine way um obviously it's basically part of the documentary rollout it's part of the rebranding it's part of all that nonsense and if anything the really sad thing about it is that most likely the reason why we haven't seen cat on stream is because she's fat it's not to do with she had a bad experience the first time. I think the main reason why is that DSP kind of pigmatized her or convinced her not to come back on stream because she was fat. Now they've kind of accepted it and they're okay with it. But I think the main reason why is because he was ashamed of having her back on stream again because that was part of the narrative that he used to sell you know, when he first got with her anyway, or when he was, when he was with fucking um, Leanna, right? He'd be like bragging about how she looks or how young she is. And then, because I think everyone in the stream thought she was hot. And then when you got with Kat, it was almost like, hey, I've got another like hot lady that wants to be my wife. So clearly I'm not that bad, right? Look at what I've got. She's got a banging body, all this sort of nonsense. So he kind of used those things as like things to kind of gloat about. So her kind of turning into this person, 
I don't think is probably sitting right with him. But again, he's a bit of a pussy. She's not going to say anything. So most likely the main reason why we haven't seen her is because she's fat. So that kind of tells you everything about this guy. You know what I mean? Like in terms of being proud and, you know, encouraging all the wife and stuff or supporting her in that way, he kind of basically hid her away from the world because of what she turned into herself into. And now that it's advantageous to line his pockets with, he's now going to be parading her on, you know, on streams and stuff and kind of using her as bait for the trolls so if the trolls attack him and say mad things and you know as they're doing people are detractors are making amazing memes out of it he's going to use it as a point of con he's going to use it as a point to like beg for tips and stuff and act like the victim once more so it's all part of the rollout she's obviously incredibly 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 fat that's obviously something we can't deny but i still think the attention should be on this piece of shit it should always be on this piece of shit. He's the one that should get most of the ire and most of the hate from everybody online because he is an undeniable piece of shit. So he should get most of the hate. But again, you know, I know how it goes. You know how it goes. I know how it goes. Moving on from that one. Moving on from that one. Let's move to this one quickly. This is a random one. So this is courtesy of Mob Radio. And again, this is... It's perfectly understandable in some ways, but... It kind of makes me a little bit angry. I'm not going to lie. And again, just follow me here. Follow me here. But it does make me a little bit angry. One thing that I can't stand from the outside in is just a lack of loyalty. And it's odd because there are some occasions where you probably do need to cut the umbilical cord. You do need to cut the rope. You do need to kind of get out of the way and save yourself. I know that those occasions do exist. But I think for the most part, when people show a lack of loyalty, it just it just says so much more about them than the person that they're trying to get out of the way from or disassociate from. I swear to God it does. So it's courtesy of Mob Radio. Look at this. Young Miami, new reality TV show, A Day in the Life of Miami, that began filming during the VMAs, Go Pappy, is already facing some challenges. It's being reported that she has she has to reshoot scenes for said show because of Didi's legal woes. Doesn't that make, doesn't, isn't that a little bit of a kick? Like, if there is an example of somebody only being there for you during the good times, is this. Because there's no, obviously, there's no arguing that Diddy obviously did some gross shit and what he's been accused of is fucking heinous. But let's also be, not be naive to the idea that everybody was kind of aware that he was a bit of a freak anyway. She partly got with him because of the freak shit and because of the money as well, right? Because he's, you know, he's incredibly wealthy. He's able to provide him with this incredible life. And all of a sudden he's facing, you know, some adversity. He's going through some troubling times and she has jumped the ship. No more posts of him online. No more videos. No more bragging about what he's buying for you, you know. And now all of a sudden this fucking reality TV show that she was filming, they're going to reshoot all the scenes that included Diddy in it. Ugh. If ever there was a form of like lacking loyalty, this is it. And again, I understand, you know, the guy's a creep. He's obviously going to be accused of being a monster. He's being accused of being a rapist. I understand why you're running away. But come on, man. Come on. At least pretend like you're, like, if anything, I much prefer it if you just don't say anything. Because, you know, she doesn't need to say anything because she didn't do none of the crimes. But just keep quiet. Why do you need to make these, why do you do these kind of public you know semi-public sort of like declarations and make it very clear that you're not involved i don't like this stuff so big up richie hello as long time buddy glad to catch live show did you ever get your balenciaga flat if not are you refunding the go funch money if not what do i know what do i know fyi all right everyone yeah, yeah, you know, I actually did. I actually did. Um, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a good reveal on them soon. Thank you for reminding me. But there's actually gonna be a good reveal on them soon. Baby blue flats. There's gonna be a very, very big reminder on them. So big up Richie. There's gonna be a big, big, big interesting reveal. You're gonna you're gonna laugh when you see it. You're gonna definitely, definitely laugh when you see it. But big up Richie. I appreciate you, brother. But yeah, I just saw this and it kind of was like, come on, man, really. Now you're fucking backing away from the guy after everything that went down. It's a little bit annoying. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe I'm thinking too much about it. Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? Moving on from that one. Moving on from that one. Let's talk about this. Have you guys seen this? This is fucking wild. Um, <laughs> I'm fascinated. Truly am fascinated by... DJ Academics is taste in women. 
it just fascinates me because he was somebody that did this whole like hard on thoughts thing which was odd he's obviously always you know sometimes he'll be on fucking fresh and fit barking at random only fans girls and insulting them and stuff and questioning their fucking you know um viability as good wives and shit he'll be there haranguing them for having crazy body counts and stuff just generally being very misogynistic when it comes to the women and having very high standards about the women that he dates and all that stuff right he's just you know very opinionated and all that stuff which is odd too considering how fat and ugly he looks right that he's got all these big opinions about women and shit where it's like hey most of the girls that you're smashing are only smashing you because you've got money so why are you like, <laughs> why have you got all these standards and, and stuff like when most of the fucking snatch that you're getting is only because of your bank account anyways that being said the actual personalities or the kind of types he goes for are interesting because they all seem to be like he likes kind of very devious hood rat type of girls who seem to be a lot more street smart than him they seem to have maybe more life experiences whatever it may be and they always find a way to take advantage of him from from selena to the i think the other girl was like angelica or something and then to this one shay they all have a tendency to take advantage of him and just kind of run his pockets and he seems to not be able to kind of pull himself away from these girls even though even though especially with this shay girl she legitimately put his life in danger because there is an accusation out there that she was the one that was behind him getting um the attempted robbery because you know um, somebody came to try and rob academics at his house and people are suggesting that it was an inside job that shay knew the people that did it even though she fired back some shots and stuff and she was holding him down that it was almost some sort of weird inside job and obviously there was issues with her allegedly hitting academics his mom and all this sort of nonsense so she's done a, she's done a lot of crazy shit to him but he still can't seem to let let herself let himself go but this in this video of Che recently on her Instagram live recording academics is legitimately hilarious because this is more proof to me or to anybody that needs to see it that academics isn't a prize is it he really isn't the prize and it's really sad to see him in these compromising situations but this might be a bit of his karma this might be his karma for all the shit he said about people for how judgmental he is for how he feels like he's so right and certain about certain things or all these views on women all this this might be part of his karma because this woman is legitimately ruining his life in real time and he can't seem to get away from her what the fuck are you talking about it ain't nothing so good what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> what the fuck are you even talking about right now? Huh? <laughs> Look at the prize. Look at the prize. Look at the fucking prize. Look at him. That house looks like it needs a fucking Hoover or something, right? The floor is fucking horrendous. Look at the fucking prize. Look at the prize. Look at him. Belly out lying down on his phone chatting shits to somebody look at him hair all messy like look at the prize that allegedly is meant to be the prize he looks horrendous and again somebody that has so many opinions on women and their looks and shit but makes absolutely zero effort zero effort to keep himself in any kind of tidy shape like god almighty academics bro look at what she's look how she's got you looking on fucking stream fucking hell what are you talking about? <laughs> How she got him like this, man? Honestly, man. How she got him on here like this? Imagine calling yourself the prize. Imagine, like, you know, telling women what they can and cannot have. Like, imagine trying to dim down people's fucking expectations or standards and stuff. Imagine having all these big opinions and you look like this on a daily basis. That's the thing that really fucking has made me laugh so much, especially when you look with some of the contents here online. I don't know if you call it red pill. I don't know if you just call it misogynistic content, whatever it is. All these, all these guys online that have all these big opinions about women and stuff are usually the dorks and the nerds I found. It's really strange, isn't it, right? A lot of the guys that don't really have any real experience with women outside of when they were successful online. Because, you know, I think it's almost... Um, they all they kind of help each other right the girls out there that go for guys that act do it because they want a bit of the clout and obviously they want the money so clearly they kind of in a weird way help to inflate people like this as ego because i feel like you know if those girls didn't exist 
in their lives and maybe they wouldn't have such high opinion of themselves but i just find it really odd how judgmental they can be about women's just looks forget the money stuff it's the looks thing like they can laugh and snigger at somebody they can call them men they can take the piss out of their hair they weave their makeup and it's like bro this is what you're working with this is what you're working with when you're talking about other people like you're talking about girls having weird bbls and the this is not this and it's like bro like how much work would it take to 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 get academics to look like a fucking to look like a snack how much how much money would it take how much time on the table would you have to spend to get academics to look like a snack how base level because i'm not gonna lie like and again this is a crazy statement to put out there crazy hot take and i'm not even gonna pause it i think i think saucy santana looks better than fucking academics I think if Saucy Santana had to dress up in a masculine way and they both went into the club at the same time, I think Saucy Santana would get way more girls than academics. I think if Saucy Santana had to dress more feminine and, and, and try to be, and try to pass as a woman, he'd, he'd have way more chance. I swear to God. So him taking the piss out of someone like Saucy Santana and talking so bad about it, it's like, bro, like he looks better than you with a BBL and a beard and a dress. That's the weird thing. He Saucy Santana looks better than academics with a beard and a BBL and a dress. And academics looks like this. It's fucking crazy. And I go back to the statement. I go back to the statement that Charlemagne said, and I really do agree with him. Part of the reason why Act gets a lot of the hate that he gets, and part of the reason why someone like me, even though I'm a fan of his streams, can never take him too seriously when he starts barking and saying all this nonsense is like, We've seen him cry, right? The Didis and Mira thing is still the one that kind of makes me laugh, right? We've seen him cry on stream about people quote unquote bullying him or clapping back. We see him crying at the thought of, you know, Saucy Santana beating him up and then, you know, threatening to rape him, which is fucking crazy. We've seen him scream at girls and then get taken advantage of by this Shea woman. But I think ultimately, ultimately, when it comes to academics, the really sad thing about and the really hard thing he never really kind of got his head around is the fact that he's just too fat to like say the things that he's saying unfortunately in the world that we live in nowadays you just can't speak with a certain level of bass in your voice about certain things when you look the way he does and Charlemagne was right Charlemagne said this in the beginning like academics if he lost weight he would get he wouldn't get as much hate and I think it's true he just looks too much like a guy that you would just you know that meme the meme they have of like a chat nigger and it basically looks like academics, like with a burger and a henny next to them, like, you know, criticizing someone in the comments. That's what he looks like. He just looks too much like the quintess, you know, like the stereotypical commenter, right? The stereotypical neck beard, right? Basement dweller kind of guy that you can never take him too seriously when he says certain things about women, relationships, um, the streets, gang culture. You just never can take it seriously because it's like, hold on, we know what you look like. We know what you look like. <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like how can we take you seriously and i think that's a really sad thing because if he actually did make an effort to lose some weight and got himself into shape i think it would solve a lot of his issues even when it comes to like self-confidence and because you know there's a little bit of insecurity i think going on there but the fact that he's even dating this girl in the first place but i think that would actually you know save a lot of his fucking effort i think so but again what do i know <laughs> and yeah, before like you try to like talk it's <laughs> such an uncompromising position i know we all do it we've all been there but no one wants to be recorded on live stream <laughs> like this <laughs> i know we've all done it we've all been there right we've all had the fucking laptop on you know on its side as we're fucking lying in bed watching something we've all got our phone plastered on our face lying down i know we've all done this i know we all maybe are currently doing this right now hands in our fuck especially if you're a dude hands in your balls really warm and comfortable position maybe you got your hands on your chest and you're lying down whatever but you don't want to be on live stream like this man you don't want to be on live stream like this you really don't shit about me it's like why are you like i know you for real in real life <laughs> <laughs> he's getting up in fucking i love how you can uh, that's some real fat fat boy shit he's getting up in steps right that's some real fat boy shit like he's getting up in steps that's a guy that can't do 10 burpees look at that <laughs> it's one more time <laughs> he's getting up in phases. for real in real life <laughs> 
<laughs> one, more, one more time, one more time. Look at him getting up in stages. I Look. know you for real in real life. <laughs> He's all he's all barefooted as well, no socks in the crib. <laughs> he's going for it. He's going for it. Prayer hands for academics in the chat. Prayer hands for academics in the chat. He's fucking going through it. Prayer hands for academics in the chat. Prayer fucking hands. Um, and then of course I saw this clip as well. This is fucking funny on the academics chat subreddit. This is fucking brilliant. And this basically describes him to a T. This is him basically trying to cope. And um, he does this quite often actually. Um, the gaslighting thing. Like he tries to, he tries to preemptively get in front of what you're trying to say about him. But then he would try and lean into it too heavy in a way of like, hey, if I say this about myself, you can't talk bad about me. It's like, mm, it doesn't work that way, bruv. Like, you still sound like a fucking idiot. But let's play this clip here so you can hear what he says. I'm like that. I'm sorry. Don't don't try to make up a persona for me. This is the problem with the Internet. The Internet think I'm trying to live <laughs> up to be this image. No, I'm just me. No, 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 no. You're, 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 you're not you're not you're not um, getting it right. We're laughing at who you are. We're not, we, no one's holding you to a certain... That's a funny thing he doesn't realise. No one's heard, holding him to a standard. They're just laughing at how lame he is. Like, that's it. Y'all are watching me. This is the academic's life. This is the academic show. <laughs> this ain't academics trying to... This is why let me separate myself from like, listen, I don't got no course. Separate myself. I ain't got... I'm not fresh and fit. That way y'all be like, hey, he's this of a man. One day I'm a pimp. The next day I might be simping. It be Can you imagine admitting that? One day I'm a pimp, the next day I'm being simping. That doesn't make any sense though, because if you're actually a pimp, you're not gonna be a simp. They they're two completely opposed um, you know, point of views and ways of life. Like they're completely different. There is no way to be a pimp and a simp at the same time. It doesn't exist. But obviously, when you're somebody that act, you can be that person because he also believes in you can be gangster and also be a snitch. It's like, mm, not really though, isn't it? Because technically, one of the main kind of, you know, principles of being a fucking gangster is the fact that you don't snitch on the people that you do fucking illegal crimes with. The moment you do, it kind of takes you out of the running of saying you're real and saying that you're about this and whatever. That is what it is. But obviously, you know, this is academics talking about best friend of 6 9 Been like that. <laughs> I am nothing what y'all niggas should be saying. Ack is his perfect thing. Ack ain't shit. Ack sometimes is great. Ack is a bitch. Then Ack is a real nigga. All in one. With every day. What? With <laughs> Imagine admitting this. Sometimes I'm a bitch. Sometimes I'm a real nigga. Sometimes I'm a simp. Sometimes I'm a fucking pimp. <laughs> sometimes I'm a cuck. Sometimes I'm a slut. It's like, what? <laughs> Why are you admitting these things? <laughs> this is, these are not things that you should be proud of, bro. Whatever moment, I'm a different person. That's how it be. Don't put no expectations. Maybe he learned. Maybe learn to be one person, though. You don't. Not every day you wake up being a different person. You know what I mean? You're not 19. You know what I mean? You're not trying to find yourself in fucking New Delhi or something. You're not backpacking through the through the through Southeast Asia. Like maybe at this age, you should kind of know who you are. Maybe <laughs> every day trying to be different. Like what is this? Patient on me. I'm living my life. I don't get online saying, "Damn, niggas say you should be like." That's just what it is. This is why I can share my faults because I don't want y'all to never build me up to be something that y'all think that is infallible. You feel what No, and I hate how he does this thing about infallible. It's just people can't get, myself included, being a fan of his, we can't comprehend how he talks about other people, how he talks about other women, how he talks about other people's relationships, and how he deals with his own. That's the thing that just doesn't make sense. It's like, huh? How can you talk so boldly and so much bass in your voice and be so critical and be so opinionated of other people when you're legitimately legitimately getting your pockets ran by this girl that looks like she's no older than what 22 23 i don't know how old she is maybe she's not older than 26 you're getting taken advantage of by this girl that's like i don't know under the age of 28 and she's literally running your pockets so how could you have such a big opinions about other people when you're getting simpter like this? Big up Austin Casey, I appreciate you, brother. Back never watched Trudy Ray Moore, aka Dolomite. Dolomite was the king pimp.
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, it's just lip service, these guys, man. They talk a big game online, but it's just lip service. It really is lip service. I swear to God, it really is fucking lip service. Um, but let's continue this. Big up, the, um, us in case you appreciate it, brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I'm going to live my life, because when I get online, I don't let y'all dictate it. I know I'm going to live my life, and y'all consume it. The moment that y'all get tired or, or, or don't want to consume it anymore, y'all leave. The moment it's boring for y'all, y'all leave. So that's why I live my life how I want to live it. <laughs> let me simp in peace. <laughs> if I want to simp, if I want to crash out, let me do it in peace. It's like, yeah, we would, but then you don't let other people do it in peace. You know, that's the thing. He says that, but he doesn't let other people do it in peace. That's a weird thing. He can simp, he can cuck it, he can cuck as much as he wants, but when other people do it, it's suddenly it's not okay. It's like, come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on, man. But then to make matters worse, to make matters worse, where is this video? To make matters worse, look at this clip. Look at this clip, courtesy of No Jumper and the Adam and Wax show. Look at this sad ass clip. <clears throat> that you didn't realize what it was. He said what he's saying. <laughs> he had to I'm zoom in, saying, maybe. I just didn't bleed, like, what the fuck I was seeing. After was All like right, a, listen. Like, the if it was a dog over there by the door, you would know that's a dog, right? Yeah, you know that's a dog, right? Yeah, for sure. If it was an ant crawling on the floor. You might not know. It's so small. So are you saying? I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying she caught my man off guard. I man. think it was, it had to have been caught off guard. She just caught my man. If you don't know what they're talking about, somehow, WAC 100 has a picture, a dick pic of academics. Somehow, he has a picture of academics' piece. You see how crazy things are getting? That fucking girl he's with, your big up high def, appreciate the super chat, brother. Cheers to 2024. R.I.P. Chen. What do you mean R.I.P. Chen? Is Chen dead? Or you mean R.I.P. for the show? If Chin died, that would be fucking hilarious, actually. If Chin actually did die, that would be so fucking funny. Because we'd see an immediate drop in the quality of fighting the kid. <laughs> if Chin died, we'd see an immediate drop in quality. An immediate drop in quality. An immediate drop. The audio would be shit. It wouldn't get uploaded on time. The tiles would be all fucked up. you see an immediate fucking dip. Immediately. <laughs> But big up high dip, appreciate you. Let's go back to the clip. Man, it was ahead. just a bad pick. I'm shooting us from bail. Mean bad what, what did Flacco say about when he was Flacco doing? Flacco said, said he know I got real yard man. I know you are real yard man. <laughs> did you show Flacco? <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you. So Flacco I only showed him. About I only showed him, and he said, yeah, "You want to know the line of the plug man. reaction?" Yeah. <laughs> what did your wife say? I won't tell you the exact word she Call said. Her, bro. No. I'm going to skip, like, like, she skipped for real, bro, laughing at it and went straight to sympathy. She immediately was like, oh, poor Ag. <laughs> and that wait, is wait, why wait, I'm wait, saying wait, wait, it's, wait. it's not a good thing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine some of your biggest enemies? Academ Adam, Adam being, you know, they like to pretend that they're cool, but academics and Adam aren't cool. But can you imagine your biggest enemy having a picture of having your dick pic and, you know, showing it to his wife and she being like, ah, because what? He's got a micro penis or something, which obviously explains a lot about him, to be fair. The way he barks on stream and the way he's fucking always yelling, it does make sense that you'd have a fucking tiny dick. It does completely make sense, right? It really does, because that's definitely somebody that's, you know, incredibly insecure and trying to make up for all their own deficiencies and shit. But Jesus Christ, look at what this woman's doing to him. Look at what this young lady, and again, that's what I'm saying, it's funny. This woman is like, what, under the age of 28. Look at how much hell she's creating for academics. Look at the hell she's, she's creating. She's terrorizing him in his home. She's beating up his fucking mom. She's shouting at him, exposing him online. And now somehow she has managed to get a fucking dick pic of him sent, sent, sent to his greatest enemies. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad in, angle. Poor act as in that's fucked up sheet. Exposing them or poor act from what she was looking at. Poor act as in my wife is socially knowledgeable. She knows 
how something might go over on a PR level. And I think as soon as she saw it, she could kind of envision the uh, the Salem witch trials erupting over this picture. Call your wife, bro. I like to keep her out of this kind of stuff. That's the homegirl. She's going to be mad. She that said, I didn't what? call her? She said, what? Anything you ever need on the show, tell them to hit me. Come on, bro. Like, Lena would not get mad at All me for almost anything content wise, but I feel like she, she would. Fuck with what? She would get mad at me if I tried to involve her in this. No, she would. Yes, yeah, she, she would actually be annoyed because she, she may be a porn star. She is like the nicest person ever. Then I have a solution. For She's that. not a mean person, and she would never be mean about that something I think like this. All the fans watching think she work. What? I understand what you're saying. Let a black guy call her. <laughs> Him? Yours truly. Let a black guy call her. She seems to respond well to black guys. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. I the fucking hell. <laughs> oh. So in this whole mess, in this whole mess, Wack is trying to get his dick sucked by fucking Lena. In this whole mess, Wack is trying to find a way to get his dick wet. Look at these people, man. Look at these people. Look at these people. God almighty, bro. Just the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of feeders, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> Adam, re Adam realizing like mid conversation what's happening here. <laughs> Whack wants to fuck your wife, yes. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's like, what? She seems to respond well to black guys. It's fucking insane. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Let me call and ask her. I don't know. Why's your phone ringing? What are you doing? I don't know, man. Some fucking people from Freehold, New Jersey. I don't know who the fuck that is. They've heard that. Let a black guy ask. Worst thing she could do is say, whack, fuck off. And I'm not going to say, no, that's the homegirl. Let me ask her. Let the black guy ask her. Okay. I can't. She's really going to be mad at me. She can maybe edit this out. Guy asks. Okay, but I have to give her the warning that we're live. Say, the black guy's got to ask you a question. Let me just give her the warning. Prep her. Warm her up for the black guy asking the question. Pause. Don't warm her up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you have an issue. You have an issue with the that that saying is the thing you want to say pause on, not him. Basically, anyway. <laughs> you will not be warming my life up, Miss. All has been forwarded to. Anyways, anyways, you get you get the gist, right? Um, there's also another clip here that I just seen. Actually, there's actually a fresh one about fucking where is it? There's actually a fresh one with this other girl now that's come out the woodwork saying some fucking shit. Honestly, this guy's life is a fucking horror show. Academics' life with women is a fucking horror show. It really fucking is a fucking horror show. Um, let's see here. What? Is this real? I don't know what this is about. This seems a bit fishy. Look at this. R.I.P. Baby Ack. Who the fuck is this? So what? Is that Che Girl actually pregnant? God almighty. It's a it's a screenshot from Academics' Discord, I'm assuming. Is Academics' profile on there? And we see here an ultrasound. From when? From the 3rd of the 10th. Or the, sorry, the 10th of the 3rd. So yeah, okay, maybe this is a, this was an abortion. Was, was this an abortion? Like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. Does academics have a little critter as well? Fucking hell. I have no idea what's going on here. The ca the, the title says R.I.P. Baby Act. I'm assuming maybe this baby got aborted. Maybe, who knows? But can you imagine academics being a, being a dad, being a father, having to look after an, an actual human baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh god anyway i want to play this video this is what i want to play this one this is the one i want to play this video no hold on, hold on. No, is it that one no it's this one which one is it yeah let, let's play this one 
This is the longest one, right? Let's see this. What should you say here? What Some girl called Parrot. So, so again, I guess because Ak has basically shown himself to be a bit of a simp and a cuck, it feels like a lot of these girls are probably lying, but they're obviously trying to extort him, I feel like. A lot of these like, allegations, they kind of feel a little bit like... Like, even that girl that put out the text of, like... As damaging as it is for him to say when are you turning 18? It is obviously, it sounds crazy. And it looks wild. It's also a bit of a, an embarrass. It's also a bit of a kind of a, a tactic to embarrass you more and maybe to get you to maybe send them money as opposed to like, oh, look at him as a pedo because he didn't really do anything, right? Even though it's still disgusting, I would never do that. I still think it's one of those things where these girls are smelling blood and they're going for the kill because they've seen the academics could get got, right? They've seen he could get got because I feel like academics is one of the type of dudes who can be convinced into sending some girl money not to like say an embarrassing story about him. I'm sure he can be. So I think a lot of these young girls are realizing that, okay, cool. I can get some clout from this. I can maybe get a, you know, a cash app sent to me. I'm going to fucking say something. So let's see what this guy has to say. A girl called Paris Hiltron. Let's hear her. I'm finna go ahead and I'm just finna just put it all out here. I'm finna end this live. I'm finna tag DJ Academics in the next live in about a couple of seconds. It's a bit low. I don't know why. Sorry. It's just really low. The fuck y'all want to hear? Because I think that it's time for us to get into some tea time. I'm gonna start from day one, from the second he got me the black truck to the second I got to the airport to the second he had somebody come get me to the second it was a young bitch in the car. Young bitch in the car. Bitch is young as fuck. Seventeen year old girl in a black truck with me. 20 but you still fucked him though, right? So why is this? Why is this a concern? Why I don't know. This is an odd thing, man. These exposing of like these sexual encounters when you were down with them at the time, and then now you're coming back and saying like, what is the purpose of this? So he, you, you went to go meet him. He flew you out somewhere. Um, you was impressed by the black truck because you keep mentioning it a million times. And in the car was what a seventeen year old. But you still went through with it. Isn't that more on you? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what do you want us to do with this information? 23 years old. We both going to the same place. Why am I going to the same place as you and you're 17? So you finna come see academics too? Yeah. Is what not? you doing? You're there as you well. You finna see academics too? <laughs> so you know what? You know what I'm finna do? I'm finna go ahead. I'm finna end this live. And I'm finna go ahead. I'm finna start up the new live. And I'm finna tag DJ Academics. DJ Academics, I'm just finna put it all out on the floor. I don't have, I don't give, I don't really. Why do you think he goes for these type of girls? Though? Because they bring him so much headache. What do you think it is? Do you think this is a kink? Do you think he slightly has a bit of an embarrassment fetish? Do we think that maybe when he was in school, these are the girls he always kind of lusted after, but they like they like the bad boys? Like, why do you think he tends to go for these type of ladies who seem to be very street smart, super young, but very street smart? The kind of girls that could, you know, get you set up. The kind of girls that would kind of, you know, swipe your card and shit. Why do you seem? Why do you, why do you think he seems to go for these type of ladies? It's very weird. Really give a fuck. So I'm saying you don't fucking scare me. You don't scare me, bitch. Nothing that you do scares me. So, let's get... No, yeah, Ad Adriana, no. I, I don't think they're hood... Book I don't think they're hood rats. They're level above. Like, there's hood rats and there's level above. Because I think... When we talk to talk about hood rats, I think of, like, just, you know, girls just on the block. There's a level of a girl that's, like, a hood... Like, a level above. Maybe a, maybe a sophisticated hood rat that's able to kind of get money out of guys. Because I think some hood rats are just, like, bums as well. But I think there's a level above where they're like, they get driven around, they get given bags, um, you know, they somebody pays for their hair and nails and shit. There's that kind of level of a hood rat where they're just a lot more like clocked on and they can sometimes get a lot out of guys without even fucking them. That's the really clever bit about some of these girls. They're not even like, it's not even like a sexual exchange. It's like, nah, they can get a lot out of the guy just by making him feel like a king without even having to fucking, you know, tug his meat, which is a fucking talent. Yeah, let's cut down to the, to the to the chase. Yes, he knew she was 17. The girl showed me her fucking ID in the car. He knew that that girl was 17 years old. He knew that the girl was 17. DJ Academics, and you keep playing these games like... 
he keep playing these games, you know, like, oh my God, you know, I, I, I would never do anything to a young girl. You thought I was 18. You thought I was 17, 18 years old. You asked me, you said, are you? <laughs> okay, now it's getting dicey. <laughs> now it's getting dicey. What? So he's into girls that look younger. Now it's getting dicey. Now it's getting a little bit dicey. 17 <laughs> or you 18? I'm 23. Why would you think I'm 17 and 18? Uh, Academics? Where did you get that from? Who told you I was 17? 17? Really? You think I'm 17, Academics? Seriously? Why do you want me to be 17 so bad? What do you mean, seriously? You do look kind of young, though, to be fair. She does look kind of young. So I, I wouldn't think she was 17. Maybe I think she was 18, 19, but she does look kind of young. Why do you want my grown, oversized ass? You got braces in. Come on, bro. Like, braces are big in the... Like, the only people that have braces on are kids or, like, guys trying to pretend like they look like kids, you know? Like, and usually those guys are probably the guys that stand outside school, you know, school gates and shit, and they don't have kids. To be 17. Why do you want me to be 17, DJ Academics? Why? Why do you want me to be 17? That's fucking dis... Disgusted. You want me to be 17. Nah. Nah. Y'all know what's crazy? He tried to he tried to get me to, to he tried to put some money in my hand too to not say nothing to nobody. I don't want that fucking money. You feel me? That money don't mean nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't need a couple thousand. I don't give a fuck about the money. Hmm. X for doubt on that one. I don't need a couple thousand. That's what y'all don't understand. You feel me? I think that I'm, I'm just going to do it. I don't give a fuck about this nigga DJ Academics. There's nothing that that nigga can do to me that's, that's going to scare me. These other bitches are fucking scared. He got his bitch hitting him up and shit, texting him and shit, talking about leave my nigga alone and I'm pregnant. I don't give a fuck about you being pregnant, bitch. What the fuck that got to do with me? You're pregnant, but do you know that your nigga talk to 17-year-old girls? Who's to say that he won't touch your baby? Who's to say that when you push your baby out, who's the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the leap from going to interested to young girls into like being an actual kitty fiddler is fucking wild, isn't it? That's a big leap. Don't get me wrong. Both are ob obscene, but just because you like younger looking girls, it doesn't mean you're going to fucking fondle toddlers. Like what? <laughs> Come on, man. Like we're, we're just, we, we, I just think that it's time. Like, I just think that it's fucking time. Like, and I understand you feel me. I, Chad said only, only person is supposed to academics is her. Y'all got to fight. Get the fuck on. Get the fuck on. Shay can get her ass whooped. I can get somebody to whoop Shay. Okay, I don't care. These girls are talking shit. I don't care. Has a crime been committed? No. Um, some nastiness went down. You were obviously involved in the nastiness. You were in a car with a 17 year old going to fucking academics' house. I'm sure you didn't go there to play fucking Uno or something or spades or fucking chess. You all probably got your freak on threesomes and shit. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, if you regret it now, you regret it. It is what it is. But, you know, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Um, <laughs> move the fuck on. Honestly, man. Some people just dying for fucking attention. So, um, let's go to some comedy stuff. So, first thing, let's watch a Two to Try video. Two to Try has got a new video out. Big up Two Ladies to Try. The video is titled, um, Your Mum's House is in, is in Trouble. This could be relating to um, the recent news about, um, what's his face? Dr. Drew, leaving your mum's house. So, that's been the big news. Dr. Drew has left your mum's house. And I think I saw on the Your Mum's House subreddit, Dr. Drew liked to post he liked to comment. Somebody said something like, oh, your mum's house is going down in flames or something. And Dr. Drew liked it. So maybe there is some trouble in paradise. And obviously, um, Red Bar did a great stream where he sort of broke down that horrible fucking TV show thing that they tried to do behind a paywall that was absolutely terrible. So clearly they're going through a bit of a bad time. And obviously the fans aren't really liking the show anymore. It's not as funny. Um, Tom has definitely got under people's skin a lot more. So maybe that is part of it. But let's see what the video and what he's saying. And then we can go and comment along the way. All right. So things are still not looking too good for Tom Segura in your mom's house studio. Oops. Videos. You know, they ended last. One second. Let me let me lower the because I, I put the filter up really high on the previous video because the sound was too low. Sorry about the sound if it popped off too low. Let me um, actually lower it a little bit. There we go. Let's go back. Let's continue. 
All right, so things are still not looking too good for Tom Segura in your mom's house studios. You know, they ended last year on a bad note with Tom's airport meltdown and Nadav, their producer, leaving the show. And it looks like these problems have carried over into the new year because Dr. Drew just announced that he's leaving the company and carried over. And By the way, um, fair play to Nadav. His channel side are very shaky. Remember when I reacted to it? I didn't really like anything that I saw and I was kind of, you know, questioning the logic behind leaving a stable job like your mom's house thing to do your own thing. It seemed weird, especially if you could do the same thing, if you could do both at the same time. But he's been proved correct. His Patreon is popping off. He makes tons of money on Patreon. He gets high a lot of, he gets a lot of views on his fucking own fucking channel on YouTube. So he's doing, he's doing pretty well for himself, to be fair. He's carved out a nice little lane for himself where he kind of, you know, does similar things that are, to what I do and other people that comment on comedy, but he does more of a, like, I used to be a producer. Here's my insight on podcasting. So it's actually worked out well for him. Big up in the dive. It's actually had worked out well for him. To the new year because Dr. Drew just announced that he's leaving the company. And then on the way out, he liked a tweet that said, the ship is going down, LMFAO. Yeah, that's the one. See, look at that. He liked that tweet. So that's not the best sign there. I mean, maybe he just didn't know what this tweet was. Yeah, or maybe he could be one of those guys that just likes anything with his name in it, right? He might be one of those type of dudes too. Referring to or something, but it's just not looking too good here. You know, first Nadav leaving and now him. And people seem to think this might have been a ripple effect from Nadav leaving. And he was a bigger part of YMH than people realized, including Tom. But I think he's starting to realize it. Like on his show recently, he was talking about him. Are those fake laughs that they do, or do no. they find that funny? No, no, they, that was real. These oh. guys don't, they don't fake laugh. Okay. No, they don't All fake right. laugh. It's, it's, you'll get, you'll, you'll hear a lot of silence. Really? That's, that's, that's how you can tell. They laugh. The last time I was here, they, when I was on your mom, they laughed a lot. Well, that was capital J, but he left. Did he die too? He looks like he's going to die, but okay. he's just, he moved on. Well, all uh, right. He has a very powerful, mighty laugh, and he was like a, 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 you know, a big laugher. Okay. But he left, and you can feel the hole. Yeah. All right. So I think Tom is starting to realize maybe letting Nadav walk wasn't the best idea because now the chemistry is just off, and it sounds like that's why Dr. Drew left as well. There's a theory going around that Nadav left because of... um. Because of that guy from Sopranos bullying him and stuff. <laughs> Do you guys believe that? I forgot who the kid's name is. Um, I think he played AJ in the Sopranos. I forgot his name. But there's a theory that that guy was bullying Nadav. <laughs> and that's why he left. <laughs> so it's, which is funny because it means Tom betted on the, that guy and his show isn't going well. And then the dove left and obviously he's doing well. So, you know, Tom bet on the wrong horse. But there's a theory because I think a couple of times when they were, when they were on the show, oh, is it AJ Soprano? Is that his name? Yeah. AJ Soprano. It's not, we look, yeah, Christopher from, from the Sopranos, but his name, I guess, is AJ. Um, yeah, because a couple of times when they were camera together, he would kind of be a little bit, I don't know, man. I won't say it's bullying, but the way he spoke to, oh, sorry. The, sorry, the, the name, he's, sorry, that's, oh, I don't know his name. His name is Robert Eiler. Okay, that guy, Robert Eiler, is, um, is the guy that Nadav allegedly felt very uncomfortable with behind the scenes. Because a few times when they were streamed together, he spoke to him in a not so kind way. It kind of felt like he was big timing him bully i don't know it's a bit strange energy very strange but again i think robert Eiler is also very strange because he's got a lot of that he's got a lot of that intense like former addict energy about him you know like he's got a lot of that about him so maybe that's part of the reason why he's a bit weird and awkward but yeah that's the theory that nadav left because of that guy like this comment says they listen to dr drew regularly and after nadav left they could tell it was done for they said hearing dr drew try to interact with the remaining booth boys was hard to listen to he needs a co-host or an actual producer and a bunch of other people said the same thing and i know nadav and dr drew are pretty close so i think nadav was a bigger part of this company than tom really realized but i think he was i think the same thing happened to, to tim dylan I think a lot of these guys, again, maybe maybe it's the fucking ego or the hubris or just the, you know, the delusion of comedians where they always think it's always them. When really, maybe on stage it is, but if it's a pod, I think the other elements kind of add to it. Like, um, 
I'm trying to think of the guy on Theo's podcast. Again, he doesn't even say too much, but who's the guy? The Asian dude that um went on Theo's podcast, the producer. He usually only chimes in when Theo does it by himself, but he's actually quite an important comedic bit of relief on the show. If he wasn't there, you would notice it on his own because, you know, they kind of have so they kind of have I think his name is Riley. Riley Mao or something. Riley Riley Mao or something, right? That kid kind of adds a bit to the show. Same thing happened with Tim Dillon and with Ben when Ben left. I don't think Tim appreciated how much Ben added to the show. His laugh, the insights, the weird little friction and kind of petty arguments they'd have live on, you know, on the recording and shit. So I think a lot of these comedians overestimate just their importance and don't realise sometimes with, with a lot of these podcasts, it it's about the whole team. It's about the vibe of everybody that kind of adds to why people like to listen to it. It's not just about you. It's not just about the stars. But I think the stars of the show, they get so caught up with just them being the stars that they think everybody else is, is dispensable. But then when they leave, they realise, you know, hey, these people are quite important too. Even if they're side characters, they kind of add something to the show as well. It's one of their longest employees and he was their main producer. I think he said he had been there for seven or eight years and they would interact with him a lot during the show. And like Tom said, he was basically the laugh track. And it sounds like without him, things are just completely different. But Tom probably figured since he's just a producer, then he's expendable. But now it looks like that's not the case. And I'm sure before Nadav left, he probably asked for a raise or something. Like also people are speculating maybe he wanted his own show on Tom's network, which would make sense because he left to start his own show on YouTube and it's going pretty well. And I'm sure if you're on Tom's network, it'd be doing just as well as Not Today Pal, you know, the podcast that Tom gave to Rob Eiler and Jamie Lynn Siegler. And it's funny because I clicked on a random episode of that and the first comment says, my God, the energy in the booth is dead now. So clearly Tom made a big mistake here letting Nadav go. And maybe Nadav just wanted to do things on his own. Maybe there's nothing Tom could have done. Or maybe Nadav realized his value to the show and asked for a raise or asked for his own show. And Tom denied it. And then, you know, he saw these two get a show and he's like, all right, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to go do things on my own. And it's funny that morale has been down since Nadav has left because the one time where the booth did sound very enthusiastic was when Steve-O was bashing Tom and Christina for making fun of poor people and not treating their employees well. I'm guessing there's probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Oh, it's man. all Tom and Christina just running around, <laughs> getting on private jets, uh -huh. making fun of poor people. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> Teddy Brown was very, very uncomfortable <laughs> when when uh, Steve was saying what he was saying. Very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> Next time. <we> go. <laughs> yeah, so it's not a good sign when the only time the producers and everybody working behind the scenes get excited is when somebody's trashing their employer. And, you know, a few months ago, I thought Tom might be able to turn things around with YMH. But now it's starting to look like this is a sinking ship. And I'm sure Tom is... Don't, don't you find it funny that all these comedians that complain about, you know, get, they complain about pay when it comes to stand-up comedy. They complain about, you know, not getting opportunities. They complain about getting overlooked in some positions. And a lot of these guys also, it's funny because a lot of these guys and girls, especially in the comedy, you know, they grow up rich anyway. So they grow up with, with a certain level of wealth and privilege that allows them to kind of pursue their dreams in, you know, at a time where maybe most of us have to kind of wake up and just get regular jobs and kind of give up on our dreams because we don't have the fucking time or the availability to do so. But don't you find it funny that these people are the same ones that also don't pay their employees well? You complain about people not paying you well. You actually come from money, so you know... You know <laughs> So it's not as if like you need all the money in the world. You've already fucking got all of it, right? And then you also don't pay people well. I find that interesting because there's a, a, I have a feeling, and I, and I'm I'm being convinced now more so with the stream chat. I have a feeling a lot of these people that work behind the scenes at podcasts, producers and shit, they don't get paid well, especially comedy guys. Ones, I have a feeling like the more the more flashy flashy the comedian is. Brennan being a good example, the less likely he's pays people. Like if he's on private jets and he's driving, you know, lime green Dodges and Bentleys and Porsches, chins in a fucking Prius. Again, he could want a Prius, but look at that. Look at the look at the contrast of that. Chin is probably the most important person at Thick Boy, but he drives a Prius 
and Brendan's got 17 cars. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think a lot of these guys don't pay, don't pay their employees well. Starting to realize that as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he starts to downsize a little bit. And also maybe this is why Nadav left. You know, maybe the writing was on the wall and he's like, you know, I'm going to get out now while it's still popular and I could still get a boost from their show and just go do my own thing, which I think was probably the right move from him. You know, he didn't need a podcast production company to host his show. I don't think anybody really needs that. And like this comment says, Tom and Christina overinvested in the studio. They thought the pandemic boom for all media was going to last forever. And the deals they were offering for comedians that have a draw were too favorable to them so they got rejected that's why potter and sickle cell left after a year they got an initial bump but they would make way more money producing their own show so i think podcast studio companies just aren't very realistic long term i just also feel like people just they just overestimate how funny and how entertaining their shows are i don't think there's any need for the networks and it's like it just make your show and just stick with that you don't need like it doesn't make any sense for anybody to sign to these networks and like it just doesn't make any sense when you can just set up your own channel and get all the benefits for yourself. Why would you do that? You know, even that bump, the early bump of having viewers from the other show check your stuff out, isn't necessarily a good thing either. You actually probably want to build your fan base from scratch. You want to go from having no views to some views, but have those be your actual fans, then just siphon off fans from another show. Do you know what I mean? Because they're not really people that are, you know have any kind of loyalty to you they don't really care about it. it's it just doesn't make any sense so i think in general this idea that podcast so just because you have a successful podcast doesn't mean you need to have a network it's not necessary just double that's why you have to give joe rogan a bit of credit he just sticks to what he does very well which is sit down with people and talk for hours he doesn't use that as in the way to like oh now i should do movies now i should have a tv show you know what I mean it's not like no it's just because you're able to sit down and talk to people for hours doesn't mean you're somehow now the authority on all media and all entertainment it's like such a weird ego thing because first of all the podcast market is already completely saturated there's way too many to listen to and then also like I said there's really no need for people to use a podcast production company oh uh, I just I just said that yes big up those to try yeah basically there's no need to yeah you can just do it on your own exactly I, mean, I guess the initial boost helps but also most people that sign with production companies already have a following themselves and it's not like you need this studio producing everything I mean producing your own podcast is not very hard it's like literally one of the easiest things to do i guess if you're somebody that just wants to show up talk and get paid and not worry about anything else that's the way to go but it's really not that hard to set up your own podcast it's kind of the opposite of the music industry i find that most people that want to do podcasts or do content would prefer to just do it on their own as opposed to get sign up like sign up to something like in music you see a lot more people willing and ready to sign a 360 deal where they don't get a lot of the benefits but the label does but i think in content people would much rather do it on their own they'd much rather you know bust their ass and grow something from the ground up or just start it on their own and get all the benefits as opposed to sign up with a platform or with a studio get paid a salary but they not be able to take anything more out of it just a salary i think most people would do that so though it's a weird kind of contrast in that respect and it doesn't need to be this highly produced thing. You know, some people just think the more money you spend on something, the higher quality it is, the more views it'll get. But that is definitely not. Um, Andy Ward made a comment here, which I think may be another good one. Somebody else said as well, like um, podcasting killed comedy. But this is a really good point. Spotify ain't giving you 100 mil, Tommy Boy. Maybe that is part of the reason too. Maybe Joe Rogan's deal with Spotify fried everyone's brain. And we already know these comedians are very money motivated a lot of these guys don't do stand-up because they love stand-up they do stand up because it pays well right because every every gig they go to everywhere they fly they pay to get getting paid to appear places they get big you know they sell a lot of tickets you get a good split on the gate all this sort of shit so maybe joe rogan's spotify deal made all these guys get really excited and think they were next in line maybe that's what happened even though joe rogan's spotify deal was really a one-off thing because you know he's got the biggest podcast in the world so it makes sense why he got paid what he got paid but i think a lot of these guys just saw him as oh he's a comedian like me i've got a podcast like him and they did the fucking the boy math one plus one equals one equals two sorry and then done 
here they are and they feel oh i'm next in line so in effort to kind of make themselves more appealable or make themselves more worthy of an investment they decided to fucking do networks with these other shows and stuff not realizing that joe rogan deal was a bit of a one-off we haven't seen another one like it since then do you know what i mean so maybe that's what happened actually maybe joe rogan's deal actually did fry these comedians brains and make them believe that they were far bigger than they actually are and made them believe that they could maybe you know get the next deal in line the case i mean just look at brendan schaub he acts like he has this legit operation going on and he has a whole podcast studio he was mentioning recently how he has a cfo to run things he has a bunch of employees and then he has this giant space in la which has got to be really expensive and it's so unnecessary like he has it so he goes to a different room for every podcast he does you know like he has one room for the fighter and the kid then you go to another one for the golden hour then another one for his mma show then another one for his fight companion and then i think there's a another room that mark harley used to do a show in and then he has to have a sink to piss in and it's all just so <laughs> you know what's really funny about this too it's as you mentioned i didn't think about it that's so unnecessary like no one else does their own show in that studio do they the only other person that films content at thick boy is what chin no one else has their own show so how is there a network if you all the shows include you does that make sense doesn't a network have to be like different shows with different hosts all the other shows on there do like they all include brendan yo big up nj ranger appreciate it, bro they want a joe rogan franchise but we are lazy exactly exactly nj ranger exactly the common man's a lazy one the common man's a lazy one but here they are exactly it's fucking exactly big up nj ranger so unnecessary you know everything could easily be done from one room exactly. everything could be done from his house like in an office with mm. one producer there's no need for all this it's crazy and it's just kind of sad you know because he's kind of going for what tom has or what barstool does you know where he hires different people to do different podcasts but the best you do was mark harley and that ended up being a disaster so now it's just him jumping back and forth to different podcasts acting like it's something different and the funny thing is you know he'll never realize how big of a waste everything is and how unnecessary it is but that's what makes him brendan you know it's hilarious to watch so let's get back to Tom here. You know, at least he made it a step further with the whole podcast studio, but now it's not looking too good. And the podcast market not being too hot anymore is part of it. But the main problem here is Tom losing touch and thinking that he reached the point where he could just do and say whatever. But it also shows you how much money these guys make that, you know, that's probably what, that's probably what makes it so appealing or so tempting to do what they do. Because you realize how much money they make where they can waste as much money as they waste. Like, again, not to read anyone's pockets, but, you know, the rent on that studio space that Brendan rents out isn't going to be cheap, right? They don't they don't give discounts. That stuff comes out on the third of every, sorry, on the first of every single month. Um, you're paying for that. You're paying for your own lifestyle, the habits you already have. You're paying people's salaries. It's proof that the podcasting game in general, why it imploded, has probably less to do with the quality of the shows and just more to do with like how overpaid people were like how much you know how much the money didn't make sense in terms of the quality of the shows like some people are getting paid crazy amounts of money for shows that probably don't deserve that kind of pee you know um and maybe it's a it's a it's a, it's a reflection on the whole industry being just grossly overpaid that they can kind of still survive the way they are like you know um, it kind of just shows you know basically that they're obviously wasting money but they're also getting crazy overly paid wants and people are going to support him no matter what like you could tell he's trying to move away from just being a goofy comedian to being a celebrity slash influencer that people want to pay attention to just because he's famous and he's interesting and he's doing cool stuff but as a comedian with fans that are adults you're going to lose people with that you know they're not interested in seeing tom segura's lifestyle yeah. like i think tom believed he was in a position where he could just coast because now he's got a lot of money and on social media, you know, if you have a lot of money, if you have nice things and nice cars and you're doing cool stuff, then people will pay attention to you. But since Tom is already known, like he already has an audience and his audience is not the right audience for that. 
it just doesn't work you know because usually it's just younger people that are interested in that shit like for example david dobrik he did the move that tom wishes he could like david used to do comedy vlogs on youtube and he gained a huge audience and because his audience is mostly kids they'll just watch him do anything and they think him flying on a private jet is cool and worth paying attention to so he managed to go over to snapchat and he signed an exclusive contract with them i believe and he gets paid a ton of money for it and all he has to do is just take pictures of his life because he's david dobrik and he's flying private he's going to nice hotels he's going to cool places he's going to fancy restaurants that's all he has to do is just basically live the life as a celebrity and he gets paid for it that is what tom segura wishes he was doing which you know a lot of people wish they were doing that but tom i think he was trying to pull that off and he's slowly starting to realize it's not happening but he's still kind of trying you know like recently on tiktok he posted this video that's supposed to be a parody of like a day in the life kind of thing where he does a vlog of his day and you could tell he really enjoyed making the tiktok and he'll probably continue to do it and whatever you know if this is what makes him happy at least it's better than him. the funny thing about i saw this earlier before myself the really cringy thing about this is that He's trying to do it in a mocky way, but I think he's trying to do it in a mocky way so that he can protect himself from being taken the piss out of because the the Tom of old would have absolutely laughed at this, would have been, you know, calling this guy a cool dad, would have been ripping into this person on his podcast. That's the funny thing. He's turning into the guy that he always hated, but in an effort to protect himself from pushback or from insults, he tried to do it in a mocky, funny way, you know? That's the thing that you try to do. So, which is obviously deplorable because if you're going to do the influencers thing and you're going to be cringe, stand in your cringe. You know what I mean? Stand in it, be proud of it and wear it, you know, wear it with pride and whatnot. But he obviously wants that lifestyle, but also doesn't want to be criticized for it. So, hey, I'm going to do it in that kind of mocky, satirical way so that people can't, you know, poke fun at me. But, you know, the Tom of old would have definitely taken the piss out of this guy him flipping out about poor people or having meltdowns at airports now it's time to put an outfit together i think this looks pretty cool i'm feeling pretty fresh i'm feeling good about myself time to knock out a little bit of work you know what i think it might be time for another coffee mm, this is good this one is a, an espresso blend also i'm really getting into espressos this time of year so now pre-show you know i like to go to the gym today i'm gonna do chest and back these dumbbells they only go up to 50 <laughs> i'm trying to get stronger hopefully this works these full extension push-ups are way more range than i'm used to it's really tough to keep your hips up but i'm working on it doing a little bit of back to do the back if you're gonna do the front <laughs> now it's time for another outfit change oh yeah i like that yeah so let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment that is that is a definition of midlife crisis in it fucking hell bro like what the fuck is this and if you want to see more of that from tom and also i just wanted to mention steve-o actually recently gave me a shout out on his podcast he said he's a big fan of the channel so steve-o if you're watching thanks i appreciate it and if you guys haven't seen the clip of him talking about the channel i'll put it at the end of this video but also make sure you guys go check out my patreon account there's a ton of extra content on there i just got done talking about the jimmy kimmel and aaron Rodgers. nice anyway big up um big up finger majiggy big up to his to try um moving on from that one we've got another clip to watch the burt kreischer addresses his haters this is courtesy of podcast cringe let's see what he says about this one i haven't actually seen this yet so let's see what this is saying burt kreischer addresses his, head, his haters courtesy of podcast cringe check it out you're not as fat as the internet says let me just put down the fucking bit right there me a second My impression is Steve, big up Coiler. You know what I find interesting? You know what I find really interesting? Don't you find it interesting how some people get so excited about that sort of shit? Like, two days, two days to try, love his videos, but could you, could you hear how excited and happy that he was that Steve gave him a shout out? That's the funny thing about this whole thing. Like, there are some people that do this sort of content that it feels like they're just waiting for acknowledgement or like approval from these guys. Like as if like, if they like, there's a part of me that feels like a lot of them could be convinced to be friends with people or, you know, change their tune about them. If they just give them a shout out. And it's like, 
I think that's why I genuinely like I'm I'm able to do this stuff with a bit more of a neutral neutrality is that word because I just don't care like I'm not I mean I'm not trying to be a stand-up comedian I'm not trying to get interviews with these guys I don't I don't give a fuck you know I just watch the content laugh at them and I'm sure you guys on stream are the same we just laugh and we go about our day but we're not trying to be their friends we're not trying to get involved in the entertainment industry. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get invited on their podcast. I don't want to, I don't want to interview them. I don't want to go to their, you know, maybe I'll go to their shows, but I don't want to be invited to their homes. So I don't really give a fuck. But I feel like maybe there are some people that have maybe some aspirations to it because to to try it did sound weirdly happy, in it? There was a bit too much glee in his voice there about being mentioned. Like, oh my God, thank you, Steve. Oh my God, oh my God, Steve. Big fan, big fan. It's like, <laughs> be awesome, Casey. You're right. It's not like Ariel Helwani shouted him out. It was only Stev. Yeah, but the, the, the but be awesome, Casey. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I made a whole entire video about it. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing no but to be fair to be fair to me i'm actually a fan of ariel to be fair to me i actually like ariel hawani i watch his show all the time like let's not do you know what I mean like let's be fair i actually like ariel hawani so it's different because i actually watch his show like you know like let's be real so maybe that's why but but i still think i'm different <laughs> I think I'm different because honestly, like, I don't know, apart from maybe Rogan, who I actually like, I don't think anybody like, or maybe what, if Sebastian Mask, like you guys know how much I love Sebastian Mansako or Bill Burr, maybe if they, if they gave me a shout out, I'll be happy, but I'm not going to be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you know, like, just humans, man, just humans, who gives a fuck? And maybe a bit, I think maybe a bit of distance from these people as humans is actually a good thing. You can actually laugh more because they're, they're kind of like, they're not really human, right? You're just laughing at their dumbness. But maybe when you know them a bit more, it's hard to kind of point fingers and shit. But I don't know. I don't know. I just thought he was a bit too excited there. There was a bit too much glee in his voice about, but again, who knows? He could also be a big fi fan of Jackass, right? Steve-O could say, no, I grew up on, no, I mean, sorry, Tony to Trial could say, I grew up on Jackass. steve was actually a comedic, like, icon to me. Maybe Tony to Trial got introduced to stand-up because of Steve-O, who knows? But he did sound weirdly excited. But anyway, the less said about that, the better. Let's move on. You're not as Fat is the Yo, big up Rally Ray Redact. The shout out was a subtle diss at Bopper as well. Ah, that makes sense. Big up Rally <laughs> Rally iPod Redact. That makes a lot of sense because Steve isn't shy about dissing Brendan, is he? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, maybe that is. Maybe that was it. Plus. Two Days to Try has done a lot of videos on, um, what you call it, on Tom and shit, innit? So maybe that's part of it. He wants to, like, a sneak this at Brendan and obviously a sneak this at Tom and all that sort of shit. Your mom's, yeah, maybe, maybe there's ulterior motives behind that. You smart. You smart. You fucking smart, Roll. Roll, I read act. You're fucking smart. You're not as fat as the internet says. And I was like, huh? He's like, oh, there's a Reddit thread about like an over under on when you die, and and by the way, <laughs> that death thing is very real. I get emotion. <laughs> you remember what I said on stream? Do you remember when I said on stream? I find it really odd that there are people out there that are waiting for Tom for Bert to die to like kind of justify their concern or you know to 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 almost kind of you know prove that you know drinking is bad for you or something. Remember when I said that? I guess he's seen it too. I guess he's seen these threads because I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't think he actually saw all that stuff around him. But I think in the last few years, it's got. But you know what's funny about all that stuff? To take it back, I'm already stopping at twelve seconds. You know what's really funny? He's partly to blame. 
I think he kind of carries himself in a way where he's like, look what I can get away with. You know? I think he kind of, he kind of is the one that makes people work. Like he carries himself in a way of like, look what I can get away with being a grown up. So naturally people who live a regular life and work a nine to five, you know, I don't say, but they're like, how the fuck is he still alive? And that's what stirs up the whole kind of conversation around him dying. I think he's actually, he kind of, he's weirdly the cause of it. I'm not going to lie because he kind of, you know, the Mickey, Mickey Mantle gene thing, he kind of has a lot of pride in the fact that he hasn't died yet. Oh my God, I got my blood work done. The doctor says I'm super healthy. Like all this sort of shit. He kind of leans into it. So complaining that people are speculating about when you're going to die because you're a functioning alcoholic, but then also bragging about it as a way to like show how special you are because you're an alcoholic that's able to succeed and be a millionaire and do all these amazing things. You know, it's typical typical victim complex for some comedians isn't it always fucking the victim always the hero of their story you have to choose one don't think about this <laughs> maybe just a couple times if people when i'm gone <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's crying about he's not crying about the thought of him losing you know missing his family or whatever he's actually crying about not being amazing anymore and people not being able to see his content and shit that's what he's actually crying about like i can't believe i'm gonna die one more at one time and people are not gonna see my instagram stories they're not gonna see my marketing clips that's what he's actually crying about not his family not missing seeing his kids grow up or maybe having grand or you know raising his grandkids no he's thinking about all the content we're gonna miss <laughs> When he's gone. <laughs> People just go like, man, it would be so much cooler if Burb was here. Like, God, we'd have so much fun. We got Austin Casey. Who the F is Ed Milet and why is burnt on his podcast? Good good question. Who is Ed Milet? Let me, let me Google that. Who is Ed Milet? Big up Austin Casey. Who the fuck is Ed Milet? Who the fuck is that? Yeah, Ed Myler is an accomplished entrepreneur with a sincere desire. What kind of blurb is that? With a sincere desire to help others by sharing what he has learned as a businessman, husband, and philanthropist. Basically, he's a grifter. He kind of looks like Rob Cardone, right? Yeah, I, I sense grifting. I sense MMLs. I sense motivational speaker. I sense realize your power. What do you think it what do you what do you think it is about these people in Hollywood? Like can somebody someone explain to me? How do these guys seem to be able to infiltrate podcasts, especially comedians? like how, what do you think it is about these people that people can't seem to like see past? Because they're so they're so transparent. Like why do you think people seem to like not be able to to sniff out bullshit artists like this like you know look at look at these pictures the rolls royce in front of the private jet it's like come on bro come on come on the celebrity friends look look who's look look who's hanging out look at that come on anthony rob like come on it's so bizarre like Anyway, what are you guys saying here? There's a whole thread on the Ed on the Discord. Oh, really? Shit. Okay, cool. PDP podcast is triple lower case. They've just replaced inf inf Okay, yeah, that's a good point. They just replaced infomercials. Very good point there, Adriana. <laughs> the world's fattest flexor lows. Like, wouldn't it be great if Bert was here and he just walked in with a bottle of champagne and. And a crazy story or like, I just like. <laughs> that ego is fucking crazy. <laughs> Would it be better if Bert was here? <laughs> Some people are like, oh, I wish Nelson Mandela was still around, right? I wish Muhammad Ali, 
you know, didn't have to suffer the way he did, you know, during the latter stages of his life, right? And he could really kind of, you know, get his flowers and whatever, maybe. All these fucking good stuff. I wish you could maybe go back in time and maybe, you know, kill baby Hitler. Whatever all these things are. Nah, people, what they really wish, Bert was here to have shots. <laughs> this guy's fucking insane, bro. Just when we thought we were out, he pulled us back in. Bert's appearance on Ed Milet's podcast this week was truly extraordinary. <sighs> there really never has been another comedian as delusional as Bert and the people he surrounds himself with. And if you think I'm hyping this up, just take a look at this. Difficult. Love doing stuff I don't like to do. I think that would surprise people about you because you ha you are like a disciplined guy. You do have these routines that you do. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> can you say you're disciplined when you're overweight is that possible or is that completely eradicated like can you say you're disciplined when you're overweight if you're above your recommended bmi can you actually say you're disciplined like can you use that as a as a way to describe yourself it's like saying you're rich when you got no money in it like can you say that or oh, i'm a homeowner but you rent it's like but you can't Say you're a homeowner if you don't actually own a home. How can you say a discipline when your body is one of the best examples or best representation of your discipline and you're not able to kind of keep that in some level of control or under some level of control? How is that possible? Oh, you know what's funny? When you search for this Ed Milet guy on, on YouTube, on Google, sorry, another person that gets recommended to him is the other king of grifters, Tom Bailu. These people who kind of make a career out of speaking to other people who are successful and making a name off the back of that, I find them to be some of the worst grifters ever. Like, I'm just going to build my success on talking to people who've actually achieved some level of success. And then I'm going to give courses and do motivational seminars about what I've learned about talking to people who are successful. It's like, huh? Shouldn't they be on stage? Shouldn't you get the people that you speak to and that you motivate? Shouldn't they be on stage, actually? Because, you know, they're the ones who are actually successful, not you. I find that grift to be one of the worst grifts in the world. You are kind of into personal development and self-help, yet there's the machine side of you. Yeah. That everybody sees, like, this dude's out of control. This dude's a big drinker, big partier, a lot of dabbles in everything and so this is why you're so fascinating to me because you're you're this multi-dimensional human big up ricky oh fucking hell the suck big up ricky bert did nothing wrong he did everything, everything right exactly big up ricky picture exactly basically that's the thing in it you know what that's the through line between low cows and some of these fucking podcast comedians they're very similar in that right i did nothing wrong i did everything correct i'm amazing I'm also the biggest victim. Look at how amazing my life is. Oh my God, everybody's bullying me. Hmm. And, and, and when people watch you, no, I'm being serious. I think when people watch you, it's, it can seem on the surface, the shirts off, hilarious as hell, filling up arenas all over the place now. There's a one-dimensional dude. I got it. There's a shtick yeah. there. Then you listen to your comedy. It's not shtick. You listen to your routine and your life and how you actually got here. And there's a depth and dimension to you that I think would surprise most people, including the fact that you're really a routine dude. You swim almost every single morning, right? Yeah. I work out every morning. I have a trainer who comes to my house. <laughs> I, I watch what I eat. I'm pretty strict on my diet. You <laughs> Come on, Bert, man. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. You look great, by the way. Oh, right thank now. you very much. I'm down 40 pounds. Stop the um, cap. Okay, whoa. Hang on a second. Let's Stop back up cap. that truck. Did it just lay out how multi dimensional Bert Kreischer is? Bert's about as multi dimensional as Tom Segura's side chick, Lauren Compton. <laughs> but that was only the start of it. See, this is the problem. Ed thought he was hyping up Bert, warming up his audience for this once-in-a-generation talent, and he completely forgot that Bert inevitably turns every discussion he's involved in into a therapy session. And it didn't take long for him to show his emotions and start crying. It wasn't his love for family or his friends that triggered him. Oh no, we're talking about Bert here.
It was his love for himself that got him in the end. Do you know what a blessing it is that you have what you have? I kind of do. That sounds really crazy, but I yeah. kind of... That's the one thing that you see again with Low House. Like, that's the thing that's been fascinating me about um, watching Low House because I always assumed when you were, when you were a narcissist that you almost... Hmm, what to say to that? Yeah, Austin awesome Casey, appreciate it, bro. Scammer alert. The SEC has charged Impact Theory, a.k.a. Tom Billy, with conducting an unregistered offering of crypto asset securities, the agency said. You see? Look who is, again, I'm not somebody that does the whole association thing too much, but I'm sorry. If you're in the company of the Tom Bellew guys and he's getting accused of fucking cryptocurrency fraud, like in case he has suggested there. But yet somehow this guy's got a show on Sirius. You see what I mean about the podcasting, content, radio thing? As much as I... It's just full of scammers. But I also think the industry kind of empowered them to be scammers because they just gave... It's just everyone's been overpaid, really. That's where the bubble burst. Not because the shows are shit, but mostly because they just ran out of money, <laughs> basically. You know what I mean? But, hey, what do I know? Anyway, what I was saying before, big up um, Austin Casey, I appreciate it, brother. What I was saying before, I find it really interesting how these narcissists nowadays on con in content creation world, these comedy podcasters, they're narcissistic and they're very self-absorbed. They have very you know delusional opinions about themselves. But I always thought it was interesting because I couldn't understand in my head why they would because of what they look like. Does that make any sense? Like Wings and Boogie and DSP, you know, are probably, you know, three of the ugliest people that you've ever seen walk the face of this earth. Two of them are over 400 pounds. But the way they speak about themselves with such confidence, you'd think they were fucking Brad Pitt or something. It's so odd. Same goes with for Bert. Like, what have you actually achieved in your life? Like, actually, you're a mediocre stand-up comedian. You got into podcasting early. That's why you're basically done well in that regard. You're friends with Joe Rogan. But then the way he talks about himself, the way he kind of walks, the way he carries himself, you'd think he was fucking, I don't know. You think he fucking created Netflix or something. It's like, huh. If I have in the moment on stage thought, this is really cool. Uh, you get to take people out of their memory, out of their, out of their thoughts for a second, and you get to get them to be present and laugh. And if and I, I've said this before, if, if I can leave anything, I would my my legacy. I would love for it. Uh, I'll get emotional. Mm. <laughs> I get emotional thinking about this. Maybe just a couple times if people when I'm gone. <laughs> the ego. I'm people so amazing. Go like, I'm so amazing. And it would be so much cooler if Bert was here. <laughs> like, God, we'd have so much fun. Like, wouldn't it be great if Bert was here and he just walked in with a bottle of champagne and, <laughs> and a crazy story or, like, I just, like... It's fucking insane. Oh, my God, Bert. You're just fucking nuts. I mean, I don't need to cure anything, but, like... Oh, really? You don't, you don't need to cure anything. You don't need to actually cure a fucking disease <laughs> and save millions of people's lives. All you need to do is drink. All you need to do is buy people shots. That's what you need to do. To actually give something back to humanity is all you need to do is to be a party guy. It's to be an adult frat boy, a 50 plus year old guy stuck in his fucking college era. That's what you need. That's what, that's what leaving a lasting legacy is. Not curing terminal illnesses and shit. No, 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 no. Let's just be the guy that buys people Jaeger bombs. <laughs> just for people to go like, God, man, I wish he was here. That was that would be so fun. Mm. Like just, and I don't need it to be the world. Just like, yeah. like a solid hundred people <laughs> to just be like, man, can you imagine if Bert was here? Mm. Like that, that energy. I think it's what it, it. That energy is what defines me. It's what I've always wanted and searched for as a kid. Is, is, I I wanted, I, <laughs> I wanted people to like miss me. And like I noticed Jesus that like Christ, the ego, bro. at a certain the point, ego. like if I left the room, no one cared, and if I wasn't there, no one was like, "Where's Bert?" I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm just 
building to hopefully get it to the place where people go like, God, man, you're like, yeah, I, wouldn't it be cool if Bert was here? I, I know my daughters will say that, but. Yeah. I know my daughters will miss that I'm not there as opposed to I'm going to miss not being able to see them grow old and start families and shit. What? The fucking fuck, bro. But in some parts, in some ways, sorry, it's almost better that he's like this and he says this because it is quite congruent to how he actually acts. He is very self-absorbed. He is very self-centered. He is very jealous. So it's um, um, selfish. So it's actually quite nice that he says these type of things because it matches his personality and how he acts. It is all about him. It is a Burt show at all times. So his, his view on things, his perspective is very much me 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 pick up ricky picture wings boogie and dsb had highlights in their careers too once they got out of the spotlight the curtains lifted and the real show started like bert 100 percent, 100 percent, ricky picture 100 percent, 100 percent. but that's the thing there's so much of a shit show now that it kind of it kind of take it kind of makes you forget about the highlights that's a problem they turn into such shit shows, you forget all the highlights. And all you remember is the bad shit. That's the issue. And they can't seem to see that sort of thing. Oh. That's it. They're just like on a Sunday morning when, when yeah. someone opens a bottle of champagne and mm -hmm. goes like... Mm. Who's, who's drinking champagne on a Sunday morning? <laughs> what? Is that anyway? I would have brought a joint, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You have said three or four things today, like in the history of the show, are like my favorite things ever said. Oh, and the reason there's a bunch. Jesus Christ, bro! This is how they make it in it. They suck up to really rich people and successful people. No, that doesn't make any sense, though, because I'm thinking to it, like. I still can't work it out. Why do people who've actually achieved something in their lives seem to always be next to people like this? Like, how do they seem to attract them? Because a fa if a fan tried to suck up to Bert the way this guy's sucking up to him, he'd kind of look down on him. Like a lot of these comedians don't actually like their fan bases. I think a lot of them kind of despise their fans a little bit. There's a little bit of like, I don't know. I think I feel like a lot of them kind of secretly feel like Tom, but they would never say it. They kind of do despise their fan base. So on one sense, if you stop Tom or Burr at an airport and try to suck them off the way he did, they'd kind of look, they'd kind of shoo you away. But then for some reason, when these grifters get in front of them, it becomes way more, they take, I don't know, they seem to be like duped by it more. And it can't seem to work out why. A bunch of people cry, crying with you. The one, they want that too. And some people are sitting there going, I wonder if anybody would miss me. Okay, who's seriously crying with Bert? Like, apart from crying with laughter. But we've heard this before from him, right? He thinks about whether people will miss him. And honestly, I just cannot relate to that. I stopped and thought about it for a while, you know, trying to put myself in his shoes. And even just as a grown man myself, the problem is I really just don't care if people miss me or not when I die. Maybe if he said I get emotional thinking about all my family and friends when I pass away, hoping they'll be okay and that I did everything I could to be a good father, husband and friend but he's more worried about people missing him on a Sunday morning when they pop open champagne. Who drinks champagne on a Sunday morning? Now, exactly. look, we all know Bert's had... That's the thing, though. I don't think I've ever thought about that. Like, will people miss me? Like, again, maybe more so about what you will miss. I said, oh, man, I won't get a chance to fulfill my potential. I won't get a chance to live all these, you know, have all these experiences, go to these different places start whatever start a family but again they're all kind of weirdly 
things that don't really it's not really about you too much but I, I, I don't but the ego's not that big to be like i wonder if people will miss me <laughs> like like you're picturing you know thousands of people crying about you passing away <laughs> You're kind of trying to, you're trying to, you're hoping they they make a big fuss about your funeral. It's like a, you know what I mean? You have like people like hire millions of horses and you know a fucking hundred, you know, car long motorcade or something. It's like <sighs> had issues with drinking, and for my regulars, we've been keeping track of his weight loss transformation. Those few months last year where he stopped drinking, started exercising, and improved his diet not to mention openly doing TRT. But anyway, up until now, I've heard him talk about how the catalyst for those changes were his daughters and his sister, but he opened up a little bit more in this interview about some of the other people who influenced his decision to get healthy. So take a look at this extended clip and I'll pick it up straight after. By the way, did you guys know that Bert had a stalker? If I asked you this question, because I think a lot of people hear feedback as criticism. So when- even Ooh, that's a- powerful statement yeah do because you, how do you yeah. hear it when you hear that from people you've got this number you got a movie that killed it you got your your this dude fills up anywhere he wants right now and he can do it multiple days bert does you're making a ton of money podcaster crushing you know your your life is really really good right now there's probably a party that's like hey if this is you know do you know who you're dealing with here like i'm pretty functional so do you hear <laughs> feedback even from dudes who love you as criticism because most people that's how they hear it yeah yeah, and what mm -hmm. stinks is that when I was at my my lowest, and my lowest was these past probably seven months, starting in January, I did a European tour, then I did an arena tour in the States, and then I promoted the special. I then went to an Australian tour uh, in arenas, and then I did uh, another arena tour, promoted my movie. I did my fully loaded tour, which was six weeks, I think, this year. Lo God love this humble brag, isn't it? This is probably the lowest I've ever been. Look at all the money I made. Made money here, made money there, made more money here, made more money there. <laughs> so relatable. I love this relatability. So, so relatable. Here. Then did the cruise and built the cruise was right before that, but I was at my lowest and, and everyone <laughs> noticed. And I will say that I <laughs> I was at my lowest, surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people, and they all noticed me. They all noticed my emotions. They all noticed how sad I was. And they all wanted to make me happy. Got email. Yo, big up Uche in the chat. Wagwan. But so self-obsessed, he'd stalk himself without realize. <laughs> exactly. Bert would have one of those, um, you know how Brendan's wife has got that, that, that account? Which, which I don't think is run by her. I actually think she does have a fan that will do that, but not all like an agency. But you know, you know Brendan's wife's got that account that's like um, Joanna Fan or something. And it just reposts her Instagram stories and says, oh my God, my idol, my this, whatever. So it wouldn't be surprising if Bert had one of those. But he set it up himself, but he forgot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bert, made a, Bert made his own fan account, but he forgot he made it himself. <laughs> And he's getting freaked out because all the stuff on there is really like personal and it's only stuff that he would know. <laughs> Mails from, I got texts from, from everyone. One of them was Tom's agent. I just apologized to him the other night. He texted me, I'm worried about you, whatever, this and that. And I was like, whatever. Ran into him at dinner in New York with Tom. And I said to him, hey man, you're not my boy. You're not my wife yourself if you if you want to be in my life sit down and have a drink with me but i don't even want to hear a word out of your mouth you don't spend time with me you don't know what my life's like i don't want to hear a word i said that steve Byrne. I said you know what you know why he said that because that's how they really feel i told you what tom segura said was quite deplorable and obviously very rude and obviously you know not the greatest thing you want to hear but that honestly wasn't that surprised because i've always felt like they've all felt like this you kind of get the feeling there's a little bit of contempt buried deep underneath a lot of these comedians, especially, and I find it especially weird because most of them, most of them, most of them have come from some level of privilege where they've been able, they've been afforded a life where they can take chances 
to pursue their dreams and shit so you'd think they'd be a little bit more appreciative of that um because the regular guy who may be trying to pursue comedy probably can't maybe has to quit to get a real job to support their family you'd think they'd be a little bit more understanding of it but if anything there's something oddly weird where they kind of have contempt on their fan base so i always thought that tom ran about the pause was more a reflection of how all of these guys feel as opposed to just tom becoming an egomaniac and shit I think they all feel like that and this is a good example because look what he said to his people that are in the same industry as him they're probably you know whatever and he said what he said so clearly the guy's a little bit delulu I said that to tom i said that to joe i said that to, i said that to everybody mm. because at the time what i was like it it when someone's concerned about you it, you don't hear it that way you don't hear mm -hmm. basically he's saying let me crash out how I want to crash out. Basically, doing the same. He's doing the academics defense. Let me simp if I want to simp. Let me crash out if I want to crash out. Which I, which I'm actually encouraged. I think I said it in the stream before. This whole people trying to be concerned for his drinking and helping thing. Big up, sorry to tell. People like him suffer because they gain a level of success and still don't feel complete because he knows he's not loved. He's tolerated. A story to tell perfect 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 but i think you know what to add to that also i think another part of it is i think a lot of it maybe comes down to probably undeserved as well you kind of know a lot of your fame and maybe your wealth and stuff is a little bit disproportionate to your level of talent I think most people have, there are some people that exist that just are completely delusional and literally think that they're worth what they're getting paid. But I think a lot of them kind of know, you know, I think a lot of them know. So I think that's what eats away at them, which is odd because I feel like you have to come to terms with that. I feel there's a lot of people out there that maybe get paid, you know, disproportionate as a, based on their talent. It just is what it is. You have to make the peace with it. But I feel like they have never really made peace with it because I think deep down they all know we grifters, you know? we chances you know like they all know they kind of chance the system and you know maybe that's what's eating away at them in the, in the big same in the big sense of the word the one person who i feel like doesn't feel that way is brendan oddly enough the person with the least amount of talent is probably like someone like brendan i feel like has no understanding of that he definitely feels like no i'm dave Chappelle. i'm louis ck like he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> he's special in that regard brendan's special he definitely thinks like you know i'm the guy you you hear them saying i'm better than you in some way or, or mm -hmm. I, I got it together you need to get your together. i don't know what you hear but i did not hear it well mm -hmm. and uh and it wasn't until i realized oh they're just oh, it was my daughters who said they were worried about me mm -hmm. my daughters when they went on tour with us were fully loaded we we had it was extremely stressful you kind of I don't understand why people like want Pats. Like, I don't, this isn't admirable. You're in your fifties, brother. And you have to have what? All your closest friends that pull you to one side, plus your family for you to finally get your life together. You're in your fifties. This is embarrassing, really. I don't see how this is like a, oh yeah, they finally got through to me. Like, Maybe I can't say that. <laughs> I had a, uh, a stalker trying to kill me. It was like really bad. Serious? Yeah, it was really bad. And 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 all and and by the way, I got all this is just it's bubbling over. It really is. And stalker trying to kill me, aka somebody sent me a mean DM. Stalker trying to kill me. If that did happen, he'd be talking about it on the podcast ad nauseum. You know how he loves to fucking you know retell the story and add bits to it this is probably some person dm'd him something mean or something a stalker trying to kill me shut up and and uh and my both my daughters at the end of fully loaded now granted fully loaded is with the 32 best comics in the world every week it's a new 10 comics it's my best friends my, the funniest people in the world and we're cracking beers at, the, at, at this at breakfast we're eating mushrooms we're drinking at the show we get on a tour bus we party at night it, it's fun as fucking shit. Mm -hmm. I'm 270 <laughs> LOL Silux LOL discussed 
um, need to start getting into charity work and giving back to some people. <laughs> Big up, sorry to tell. Appreciate you. Bingo. He would rather look like a good comedian than actually put in the work to actually become one. That eventually catches up with you. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at my, I've got the best stream chat in the world. A story to tell and Silux basically saying the same thing. <laughs> more concerned with looking like a success and actually being a decent person and then wondering why they don't feel complete then wondering why they don't feel accomplished like because everything revolves around you it's probably again i'm no psychologist i'm i'm not smart in that regard but there probably is something very fun there's probably something very fundamental there's probably something integral to the human existence where you do need to think a little bit about other people in some parts of your life. That's, what, that's probably why people get pets and shit. If you're not going to have kids, you need to have something else that you care about more than yourself. No? I think there's something about the human condition where we kind of need that. If you don't have that, that's when you become a bit of a psycho. That's when it gets a little bit crazy. But I think we all need to have something we care about more than ourselves, whether it's charity work, whether it's fucking pets, whether it's children, whether it's a partner, whether it's somebody you adopt, whether it's a cause that you fight for, like, you know, whatever. You need something. But when you're purely driven by your own self-interest and it's always all about you, it's the you show, it's no, it's no surprise you end up like Bert. Even more so when you haven't had any real life, like you haven't really lived a real life. Like, you know, you've been afforded a life where you can like, because I always feel like if that was me and I, and I was brought up the way that these guys were brought up, it would be a way to like try interesting things and become like a better person because you get the chance to kind of travel the world, meet different people or whatever it may be. And kind of, it give me an appreciation of how I've grown up because you see how other people have grown up, whatever it may be. But for these guys, it seems to like, I don't know, it has the opposite effect. Really, really does have the opposite effect. Come on, play. You can't play. Five, but I'm not 300 pounds. So like, and I'm benching 225 10 times. I'm strong as I feel good. I don't feel like shit. I feel like shit probably, if we're going to be very honest. And my daughters both said, like, like at the Gorge, I killed, like, four beers at the end of the show. Last show, I killed four beers, and one of them was an IPA. Mm -hmm. And I snapped. I was like, who the f*** gave me an IPA, like, to uh -huh. kill? It was my daughter, Georgia. <laughs> oh, gosh. She goes, sorry, I don't drink. I don't know what a Bud Light looks like. Bless her heart. Yeah. And then, and. Uh, don't you find that interesting? I knew that happened. I knew that happened. But the king of fucking, the king of um, indulgence, an actual raging alcoholic, has somehow given birth to two young girls, I think they're teenagers, who now don't drink. <laughs> you see what happens. <laughs> they see how much of a shit show he is. They're like, nah, I don't want that. <laughs> they're like no thank you don't you find that interesting they're, they're not obsessed with fame the way he is and they all don't drink <laughs> uh, and we're all sitting and we got home and that's your karma Isla said you're, you're drinking a lot mm. and I was like really and, and my sister is like you look like I want to put a needle in you and just watch you deflate you look bad Georgia said you're red all the time. Like your face is just red. Now my face is normally red because I'm horrible. I was out in the sun in Florida as a kid, but and that's when I I was at sun. <laughs> Firstly, he blamed his redness on some skin condition. Then he's now blaming it on the Florida sun. <laughs> Come on, Bert. <laughs> I'm not high. I'm just tired. <laughs> My eyes are not red because I just I, I'm just tired. <laughs> what? Kind of took, like I assessed where I was, and I was like, I was never meant to be two seventy five. Mm. I was never meant dr drinking. Now is to getting me getting me through the day, and it's and it, and I say that now it's always been like that. 
I wasn't like an early morning, I need drinks kind of guy, mm-hmm. but it was just always there. And we'd go to play golf, and we'd be like, ah, f- it. Mm-hmm. Let's have let's have a let's just do a double Tito's and soda just to start. Th- and everyone's fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when my daughters, and my wife said it, I was like, all right. And then I was just like, I'll do a cleanse, drop fifteen pounds, start all over. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, I was I went to my cardiologist, and I was I was trained for it. I like. Didn't yeah. drink, took a Xanax going in, get my blood pressure down. Heart my rate. cardiologist is like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> He's like, you're the fattest you've ever been, and your blood pressure is 120 <laughs> over, over, over. I don't right. believe this. Right. And uh, and that's when I think I started I started this journey of like going. If I- the obsession of the way is getting his blood work done and seeing doctors is odd as well, isn't it? What's that all about? Is that like a weird, like, is that like an addiction thing? What is that all about? He seems to go to doctors and to get work all like, again, I don't know if this is common. Do people just get blood work done all the time? Like how often does he get blood work done? Blood work done, blood, like, is it because he wants to just, just what, gives off an excuse to drink or something? It's an odd behavior. It's almost kind of like, um, you know, people that are obsessed with like Googling their symptoms or going on WebMD a little bit. It's like, why are you always getting like, huh? If I want to continue my lifestyle, which I... Yeah, big up Austin Casey. How do Bert's friends even tolerate him and his narcissism? Lol. I can't even stand listening to him on a podcast. You know how. You know how. They're all the same. They're all the same. Don't you recognize or realize sometimes on these guys when they get on pods, they're not really having conversations. They're just waiting for the next person to finish so they can talk about themselves. So I think when you're a narcissist the way these guys are you actually enjoy talking to other narcissists because you kind of have an opportunity to keep one-upping each other and going in a circle where you can kind of just keep talk, telling you know stories about how amazing you guys are you know that's all it is that's why people call it circle jerks basically they're just there oh my god i did this oh yeah i remember this awesome thing that i did oh yeah i remember this other awesome thing like it's just like a a you know a circle of people just sloshing each other off. But yeah, he's like, that's one thing that I realized where I had to kind of like limit the sort of comedy podcast that I enjoy and just enjoy the clips. Because there was a time when I used to listen to Bert's pod and I legitimately, that's the one emotion I felt listening to it. It was tiring. Like it made me exhausted listening to Bert's pod. Like hearing him have these like, fucking go in these spirals when it came to the health thing or suddenly the box wine on the treadmill um the ext- like it almost seems like he has an eating disorder in a way does that make sense he'd go from like complete gorging to suddenly be like oh yeah i'm i'm doing complete keto i'm doing complete carnivores out what and then, oh, I'm not drinking anymore. Oh, yeah, but it doesn't include the drink that I had at lunch with my agent because, you know, I'm having steak. So, of course, I've got to have a red wine. It's like, oh. Do. Then I need to be in control of my lifestyle. Just quietly, I think the best way to differentiate Bud Light from other beers is they usually say Bud Light in big writing on the can. <laughs> Just saying, hot tip for you. Now, like I said, we've heard most of that before. His wife, kids, and sister became concerned for him, but that was the first time I'd heard him say Tom and Rogan were calling him out as well. I didn't know that. And I think that's interesting because I'm sure most of you thought this as well, that Bert's friends are all enablers. Rogan's called him out a couple of times on JRE, but never anything like what he just said there, especially the part where he apparently snapped back at them and told them to mind their own business. I'll tell you what, when you combine that new revelation with him crying over people missing him when he passes on, yeah, that's full-blown narcissism. Why is Ed trying to sell Bert as some sort of role model to his audience? But I will say this. There was one point in this interview where Ed low-key called out Bert's BS, and I thought this was actually really intelligent, if I'm being honest. So I want to give Ed some credit here. I get that he's running a popular podcast, and it's all about empowerment and positivity and all of that. He's obviously going to find it hard to get good guests on if he's just roasting them all the time, right? Probably why I can never get anybody to come onto this channel. Anyway, but you can even see on Ed's face and through his mannerisms the point at which he's like, okay, hang on, hold up, let's explore this for a moment. And it all started when Bert mentioned people on Reddit speculating about how long he'll last before kicking the bucket. I was in in Austin 
And I ran into a guy who was like, you're not as fat as the internet says. And I was like, huh? He's like, oh, there's a Reddit thread about like an over-under on when you die. And, mm-hmm. and by the way, that death thing is very real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People die every day, B. People die every day. You're not that important, really and truly. People die every single day. Probably at this moment, as we're speaking, somebody's fucking dropping dead. It's not that big of a deal. Fucking relax, man. Honestly. <laughs> you know, it's not going to show up. There's not going to be like huge things that show up before you die. That's right. Just one day, you have a heart attack. Yep. One day, you are pushing it too hard. Yep. And and. I love how he thinks he's going to die, like, pushing it. No, sometimes you just die from just dying. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it just, you just go out. <laughs> you know what I mean? He thinks he's going to be on stage, ripping off his t-shirt, sold out crowd, in the middle of a bar somewhere, surrounded by all these biggest fans. Like, he thinks it's going to be a big event. <laughs> <laughs> and give a fear of that oh Stay not as that. much not drinking okay not as much not drinking so w- w- the decision for you long term is just going to be this can you mod- moderate it and can you regulate it and that's what you're going to have to decide wow did you catch that bert's more afraid of not drinking than he is of dying just let that sink in for a moment But here's where Ed drops a truth bomb on Bert that caught him off guard. Now, I don't know a lot about Ed, but from what I understand, he had a father with some drinking issues, so he tried to offer Bert some first-hand wisdom, which I actually thought was spot on, and true to form, Bert brushed it off and tried to change the subject. Both your girls know you love them and believe in them. Uh, Both my daughters are hyper aware. I love them more than anything in the world, and I believe in them 100%. I'll tell you something to remember. Can you really say you love your daughters more than anything in the world when you're more afraid of not drinking than dying? (laughs) Can you really say your wife and your kids are the most important people in your life when you prioritize touring and boozing as opposed to looking after them and being there for them? Can you really say that? For what it's worth, the number one thing that my dad did that was negative with his drinking, I'm going to tell you what it was. It was not that he would misbehave when we'd go out in restaurants or that he was a jerk or that he, you know, got aggressive. The insidious thing that my dad's drinking did is I worried about him. Uh, well. And, and, and that's the thing, bro. It's like I created internal stress and I created, and he created in me, my dad created in me. This dude who sits here today who has hundreds of millions of dollars, popular show, great friends, blah, blah, blah. And I chronically worry and have anxiety. And the reason I have, I think I have chronic worry and anxiety is I'm familiar with it. Yeah. And we move towards what we're most familiar with in our life. And when I was a little boy, because, and I loved my dad. I didn't want my, I would worry he was going to leave. I was worried to get killed. I was worried he was going to die. I worried he was going to get in a car accident. I was worried he was going to get in a fight, you know. And he wired into me to be a worrier. And it's a rep- Damn, that's real. That's some real shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's some real shit. I never thought about that way, you know. If you have an if you have an addict as a parent, that's that's maybe some of the things you, you end up maybe despising about them when you grow up and you're older, like hating them for always making you worry, always making you just fear just fearful of the of the knock on the door, you know? Damn. How does Bert receive this? Let's see how Bert receives this, right? Let's see, because this should be something that should make you reflect. Like, you've got young girls too. You're also a dad. Let's see how how he responds. Competitive thing I've done. And that's the one thing that you should always govern and watch with your your girls is that do they worry about their dad? They love him. They're proud of him. He's an amazing provider. You on the road a billion nights a year and all the things you've had to do in the travel show and all the stuff to get where you are. They're blessed but you don't want to wire into them this repetitive thought of, I worry about my dad. Mm. I stress about my dad. Let's that was says. the number one thing. Now Let's that I'm an older says. man, I've, I had anger issues because I watched my dad be angry. My dad raised his voice a lot in the house. I've had a little bit of that too. That was how you parented back then. Right, exactly. And we respected it. 
But the big thing was. L- look at him trying man, to change the subject. And I, where's this? You see him trying to change the subject. You see him trying to change the subject. This is a time where you can kind of like, in, you know, a bit of self-reflection. Maybe a little bit of like, come to Jesus moment. Look at him try and change the subject. <laughs> oh, but worst dad in the world. This come from in me. Where's this come from? I know where it comes from. I'm worried about my dad. That's deep, man. I really like that. It's an. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Interesting perspective you don't really hear about. And look, I'm not suggesting for one second that Bert doesn't love his family or anything like that. There is no doubt in my mind that he. I am. I'm suggesting. He wants to be a good. F- I, I'll say it. I'm suggesting Bert likes beer more than he likes his family. I think he puts up with his family. I think they're a good addendment to his life. I think they provide good content for his comedy. I think they may be a good ego boost. You know, there's some guys out there that just like the vision of having like a wife and kids and a, and a dog and a house and shit, right? It's good, like, it's good kind of a crew, it's good like trophies to put on a shelf somewhere. But does he love them? No. Because if you did, you wouldn't live the way you do. Simple as that. There's more. I have more understanding and more sympathy and empathy for a dude out there who's working a nine to five, busting his ass, two jobs, trying to look after his kids, look after his wife and stuff that turns to drink more than understandable. But when you're a person that's brought up in privilege, you was able to coast through life. You had a rich dad. You know, you went, you fucking did, you were, you were in college for like, what, six years or some shit like that, right? Like, you're able to pursue a career in comedy. You've not had, you've never be, you never missed a bill. You've never gone a day hungry and you've turned into an alcoholic. You are a loser. I'm sorry. A regular, normal working class person, a regular person working a normal job, I understand why you turn to booze. Life can be hard. Life can be difficult. And sometimes blacking out a few times can help you get over things. But when you've grown up in the lap of privilege and you turn into like, he, Bert looks like some of the people that I see walking around the street, some of the zombie crackers you see walking around, that skin, that like, like, why? Why? What reason could you have to drink yourself to that level when you're somebody as, you know, fortunate enough as Bert is to live the life that he does what could honestly make you want to do that he does a few and they said already he loves to drink it's pure indulgence he just loves it so I say he definitely loves his booze more than his family 100% sure father and provider and all of that stuff but the bottom line is that drinking and partying is more important to him I mean he said it himself he's more scared of not drinking than he is of dying Live your life to the fullest, I guess. But even in the face of Ed's advice about not letting your kids stress out over your well-being because it will stay with them for life, Bert just tried to change the subject and talk about how parenting used to be different. So then Bert's public therapy session eventually turned to the whole idea of imposter syndrome. Oh man, this was great. Bert puts the imposter in imposter syndrome. Is there a part of you because you're so humble? Do you have, I have, like <clears throat> massive imposter syndrome? Oh, and that, if you don't have an imposter syndrome, you're an imposter. Like mm. if you're, it, imposter syndrome's real. It's authentic. When we first bought our, when we bought our big house, like the one we're in now, yeah. I was so terrified to post any video on social media because I didn't want anyone to think I had money. I didn't want to lose the, mm. the who I was mm. and like show my backyard. I have a beautiful backyard mm. now i will say this i worked very hard to earn that backyard sure. i got very lucky to marry a wife who can recognize good properties but i was terrified to show that <laughs> what kind of what kind of ad, what kind of uh what kind of compliment is that i married a wife that can recognize good properties what <laughs> Amazing mother, an amazing wa- uh, amazing wife, a great companion. She's my best friend. Soulmate. Nah, I married a woman that's really good at Zillow. Okay. <laughs> and I, I hardcore consistently live with this imposter syndrome. Yep, the imposter syndrome was big on this one, but just wait until you hear the next question. Ed asks Bert to pinpoint exactly what it is that made him so successful. What is it? Like, what's don't don't be humble. Like, what's the thing with you? Is it that you like connect with everyday people? Joe Rogan. Like, is it like I know you're funny? Joe Rogan. Funny, right? But like, is it Joe Rogan? 
like, hey, man, I'm rooting for that dude because I see Joe Rogan me in him. Uh, Joe Rogan. What is the thing about you? Is it the Joe Rogan the work ethic? Is it what is Joe Rogan? Is it that's made you Joe Rogan you in that seat? Will Smith right now. We beat you because we're friends with Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> so the story of our careers. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to try out for a team. Uh, we got picked. <laughs> our dad owns league. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we didn't do anything during this. Oh, sorry, guys. That was my fault. I must have mixed up the clips by accident. My bad. Here's the actual response. I'm sure there's a lot of aspects of this, but I'll tell you the one thing I know. And I promise you, I didn't watch this video before. I promise you, I'm watching this video in real time and I had no idea that was going to happen. I promise you. I promise you. Big up podcast cringe. That I don't have, that I have, that not a lot of my peer groups have, is I don't mind failing. Ah, uh, that's the one, the story of Bert's life, failing upwards. But Ed presses him for- What? If anything, I would say, if I would give him a compliment, I'd say one of the major things that probably helps him is that he doesn't have a filter. He overshares and he's very shameless in that regard. Or in his, yeah, sorry, he overshares, he doesn't have a filter and he's unabashedly a fame whore. Like he's not ashamed of wanting to be famous. He doesn't see that as cringe. He doesn't see that as embarrassing. He doesn't see that as maybe self-absorbed. He doesn't, you know what I mean? He 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 wants to be famous. He's always said his dream was to always to be famous. He's always wanted to be famous. So I think that that and obviously having no filter are good mechanisms to allow you to be well known this in the area that we're living in nowadays. Obviously, the most important thing is Rogan. But if I was to give him a compliment, I'd say his lack of shame and his you know single-minded pursuit to be famous is probably why he's not successful. For more, he really wants to get inside Bert's head for his listeners to understand the true genius behind Bert's success. Let's see what else he could get out of him. Let me ask you one last question on it. And I mean that, like, take care of yourself. You're, you're way more of an important dude in people's lives than you realize because you have a, you have a lot of confidence. And I know that there's probably this side of you that people are like, hey, man, don't get too big. But there's this other part of you, bro. You have such deep humility. What? I love people that have both of those things. They're super confident, but they got a lot of humility. If someone was listening to this, they're like, hey, man, you chased your dream. Like, you had no idea. You're just a dude in college. And by the way, everybody, I want to re reinforce this. If you have not seen The Machine on Netflix, you have to go see this movie. It's it's a ride. And That's one thing that he hasn't spoken about, honestly. I'm surprised. That I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I thought there'd be a lot more like humility and understanding of how hard it is to make movies now because he came into it super confident, super cocky and obviously fell flat on his face. Um, I would assume there'd be a lot more, um, what's that thing called? Self-deprecation. But he's really ignored this movie. Since it failed, he doesn't talk about it anymore. Like this movie is like fucking, this movie is like his Tiger Fig Whiskey. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it doesn't get mentioned. And it's one of those movies like you don't really want it to end. It's the every minute of it is entertaining. Oh, every you. single minute of this movie is entertaining. It's funny, but it's like it's a real story. I'm sure it's you know jived up a little bit. It's so good. Oh, a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and all of his Netflix specials, Razzle Dazzle out, is out right now. But like all of them are awesome. Go check his stuff out. But let me ask you this last. Name a joke. Name a joke. How does it end? How does it start? What's the themes? Name something. I bet you couldn't name a single fucking joke from the specials. Razzle Dazzle's amazing. Yo, this guy, man. <laughs> if someone was listening to this, they're like, hey, man, I would like to pursue my dream too, but I have a lot of anxiety. I got a lot of worry. I got a lot of imposter. Find a Rogan. Cinema. I got all this stuff. That you Find a Rogan. Describe that you still have. Find a Rogan. And you made it. Any Find a Rogan. Anyway. Find a Rogan. What advice would you give to somebody? Befriend a Rogan. Somebody who's like sitting. Befriend a Rogan. They're going, whatever it is, they want to open. Befriend a Rogan. A, a bakery. What Befriend a Rogan. Whatever it is, right? They Befriend a Rogan. Want to start painting. Grow up rich. What would you say to them? Grow up rich. We beat you because we're friends with Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> so the story of our careers. <laughs> oh man, again? 
I must have some lines crossed or something. Hang on a second. I'll see if I can find the right clip. First of all, the procrastination is the best part. Like, just don't don't worry about the time you've spent procrastinating. That's all the buildup stuff. Those are the muscles you're getting to get you to where you need to be. be what? Huh? Don't worry about wasting time. Isn't that the most I grew up rich thing you've ever heard in your life? Isn't that the most I've grown up rich thing you've heard in your entire life? Don't worry about wasting time. <laughs> the one non-renewable resource we all have. <laughs> Don't worry about wasting it. <laughs> oh, mate. That's the most Nepo baby thing I've ever heard. Do follow your passion. Just follow your heart. <laughs> Listen to your heart. <laughs> it will guide you. <laughs> Ayahuasca. Mushrooms. Uh, honestly, I did mushrooms. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry about wasting time. It's all going to be okay. Uh, No, it isn't. <laughs> what? Yo. some guy asking for advice right he's like a 42 year old open micer um he's got three kids <laughs> he's like hey how can i make it but it's like hey man don't worry about the time you wasted just follow your heart but my wife is complaining that i'm not bringing any money in the house follow your heart but my kids don't have fresh school uniforms follow your heart <laughs> We have to share one car <laughs> and my wife has to drive to work every morning. Full of, full of your heart, full of your heart, full of your passion. <laughs> when really you should be telling that 42-year-old open, open micer to basically get a job and give up on his dreams or at the very least get a job and then follow his dreams on the side. You shouldn't be telling him, hey, it's all going to be okay. <laughs> Put it on the vision board. <laughs> What you need to do, you need to pitch where you want to be and you just put it on a piece of paper. <laughs> and one day it will happen. You just wake up and you'll be at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Because I procrastinated just like you did. I'd had great ideas and didn't know where to pitch them and didn't know what to do with them. And then, and then... That's not really procrastination though, is it? One day... You're one day you're gonna stop giving a fuck what everyone else says. But you gotta let that happen for you. You gotta let yourself say, "I'm not gonna tell my friends this idea. Uh, they're just gonna shit on it." And you just you just gotta say, fuck it. you really gotta say fuck it and go. I'm gonna try it. I don't want. I don't care if they make fun of me. That's part of the process. Also, let them make fun. Of the worst advice in the world, man. The worst, maybe there's a bit of good advice, but there's just go for it, fuck it. But unfortunately, and this is one of the things that most Nepo babies don't seem to be able to kind of comprehend. Most of us don't have the time to just do things. That's the thing people don't really realize. It's why the some of the Joe Rogan rhetoric around everyone should start their own business and to make their own handmade knives and furniture is a little bit insulting because some people just don't have the time. They just can't do it. They have responsibilities. They have people they have to look after. They have a job they, they've got they want to keep. They have a career maybe they're trying to pursue. They just don't have the ability to just drop things and try a dream or go for like It's not something that's within their... It's just not something they can actually do. But when you grow up in privilege, that's what that's what privilege affords you. It affords you time to just explore things and to try things out, which is a good thing. But for some reason, they don't seem to be able to understand that. They think it's all, oh no, it's my hard work that got me here. It's my hustle. It's like, but Austin Casey. Stop caring what people think is the strangest advice from a guy that cares the most about others' opinions. Amen. The most caring of, the most caringest of guys is also the guy that says to you not to care what people think 
it's almost like the Brendan thing. I don't read comments and he's always in the comments. <laughs> I post and ghost, but you're always fucking reading shit. Like, come on, bro. Be honest and Casey. Fun of me. Half the making fun of me is going to get put me in the right direction anyway. But you got to say, fuck it. you got to go after it. You, you, I think sometimes had I never got on stage or had I never answered that phone when Rolling Stone magazine called, had I never taken the balls to, it's the same thing about getting in the God polar plunge yep. that energy is real you do not want no fucking way is he trying to compare or use going in a cold plunge as an ex <sighs> i'm sorry but that is the definition of being privileged if you think the hardest thing to do in your life is to have a cold shower that is a definition of growing up in the leopard privilege that you think the hardest thing for a human being to do is to sit down in a cold bathtub for a couple of minutes. Like, are you fucking crazy? That's the hardest, that's the hardest thing, right? That's the hardest thing. The most challenging thing in your life has been sitting in a tub full of ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God almighty. After my cold plunge, that's when I realized <laughs> impossible is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> want to do it you're standing on the edge of the pool all those moments on the edge of the pool are just as valuable as the moments in the pool Jeez. respect the edge of the pool as much as you do inside the pool and let yourself sit with it be scared do not want to do it lay in your bed roll around i don't want to go in this is it i'm putting all my eggs in this basket Joe Rogan's influence on these guys is, and again, I, I'm a big fan of Rogan. Like I've been listening to Rogan's podcast for like, since what, the early 400s. And I honestly can say the only thing that he's ever really, I'm like, okay, I'm inspired by this. I want to do is maybe like the martial arts things. Like maybe I, maybe I kind of, yeah, I probably did get into UFC because of Rogan, but I can't understand how these grown men who know him, use him as such a fucking guiding light for all their things they do in life they really really put him this guy on a pedestal which probably i think we should give rogan some level of credit because he has his faults he's probably getting worse with age in terms of some of his, his delulu opinions and shit and how he's starting to lean right and believe in all these conspiracy theories and just become a little bit unhinged but let's give the guy some credit he is quite well adjusted when compared to how much people suck him off. Because I feel like if this was anybody else, they would be crazy. The fact that Rogan has these type of people around him and he's not as deranged as he probably could be says a lot about him. The fact that he's kept himself somewhat grounded because this is odd. And then once you jump in, go all the way deep, get, get your head under. Don't just put your toe in it. Go all the way deep and charge it. You get one shot at this life. And if you leave anything on the table, it's just left on the table. It's, it's, you, don't, you don't get to take it with you. Sorry, just a second, guys. I'm making some notes here. Don't be afraid to procrastinate heaps. And then when you're ready to dive into the pool, go all the way deep. Make sure you put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, all right. Okay, got it. <laughs> now, come on, guys. Really, we all know the story. Bert owes almost everything to Tom Segura and, of course, Joe Rogan. He's even admitted that being friends with Rogan carried his career. I just can't seem to find the clip right now where he said that. But remember the phone call that started all of this? Rogan called Bert and he was on a motorbike in Vietnam filming his travel show. And Rogan told him he had to stop that and do stand-up comedy full-time time then he got him on his podcast and made him tell the machine story and then he told him he should tell the story at every opportunity he gets yeah thanks joe how's that going you're a real stand-up guy anyway guys no investigative journalisms today just some old-fashioned podcast cringe yeah what do you think that is about what do you think that is about? 
when it's so obvious again because maybe because i'm a fan of rogan but i don't think it's a bad thing that rogan makes your career because i think that's what being a good friend is because i feel like i said it many times on here I think if any other comedian in Rogan's circle was Rogan, I don't think they'd be as charitable as he is or as open as he is with his platform and shit. I don't think so. So the fact that Rogan does do what he does for his friends is commendable. It's something that people should like give him a lot more credit for, um, that he's able to kind of use his platform to signal boost his friends, change their lives and basically give them, you know, basically he gives them more than money. Because, you know, I'm sure he has a lot of friends around him that ask him for loans. But I think it's actually beneficial for you to actually just go on his show and get a little boost from there and then build yourself up that way as opposed to asking him to lend you a fucking a grand or a hundred grand or something. It probably does people way more good because it makes you self-sufficient, right? Um, it's like that old adage about, you know, teach a man how to fish and all that shit. So he does really well with it. But I don't really understand why the guys that benefit from it are so reticent to like admit it there's there's they 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 go out of their way not to admit it like why wouldn't you it's not like we're saying he's the sole reason why you're successful but he did play some of a part in it like a big part it's not the full reason but he did play a part so to not acknowledge it is almost like you're disrespecting him a little bit it's almost like you're taking for granted the fact that he did that for you you know by not admitting it because no one here is sitting here saying that Bert is only successful because of Joe Rogan. I know I said the joke, but he's obviously a hard worker. He's obviously not afraid of doing social media, all these type of things that hold people back and stuff. He does have a level of no fear, all this sort of stuff. There is an element of having some level of talent. He's able to communicate, connect with people. He Maybe it's the every man boozing thing people seem to like, whatever it may be. But not admitting that Rogan played a part in your success is so odd when it's so obvious to see there's it's just i don't know why all of them have a tendency to do that they don't want to admit it when it's clear as day why you know like i don't know it's it's a strange thing that i observe with these kind of guys i don't really understand it but hey big up podcast cringe big up podcast cringe what are you guys saying in the stream chat um, it's lame because there are better comics out there who deserve it and keep giving out handouts to these bums yeah yeah i <sighs> The deserve was an interesting one. I don't know if you actually, I don't know if you even deserve anything in this world. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'm a little bit too extreme that way. I'm not too sure if anyone deserves anything. You're not really entitled to anything, really. A career, a job, a family. I don't think you're entitled to anything. You kind of have to just get in. You just, you kind of have to go out there and get it really for the, for the most part. But, but if anything, the way, the way their careers are handed to them on the plate, I can fully understand why people don't like them, you know? Because if you compare their careers to like, like, you, like, um, what you call it? Like, um, Go said there, if you compare it to a regular open mic and what they have to do to be successful, you know? And it doesn't work out, even if they are talented, it's like, it's a little bit unfair, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Especially when you see their specials, you're like, God, these guys are terrible, you know? But then, I don't know. I'm getting to a point now, after seeing Kill Tony, watching Kill Tony a few times, I'm getting to a point where I'm thinking a lot of stand-up, most stand-up comedians aren't good, you know? Unfortunately. I just think it's one of those art forms that... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. um let's move on from that one let's do oh yeah toontown actually is this toontown or is this okay it's not toontown huh am i bugging out or was this called toontown episode three have they changed the name recently or is this or was it always called brendan shaw learns to drift One second, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. One sec, one sec. 
I guess that's loaded. Actually, let's go back to this. What, what are you guys saying? The commentary is continuing here. Um, it's lame. Uh, it's just like everything else. It's about striking the balance between two extremes. Exactly. NJ Ranger, very libertarian of you, AZ. Bodybuilder New, Stinger Goose says we deserve better than these 1,000. NJ Ranger, getting where you fit in. Marcus Aurelius, hilarious. George Carlin, special. I mean, Go says, I mean, there are more talented comics. You are right, technically. No one deserves it, but there are better comics who... Okay, cool. You're right, Go. Let, let, me, let me rephrase what I said. Maybe because I've been on the internet for too long and I've been on... Like, most of you guys on the stream probably are the same. I've been on the internet since the internet was the internet i've been on chat rooms i've been on forums like nothing really affects me i mean i don't don't really care like i've seen everything i've seen it all i don't really understand like people that get affected by bad comments or start crying about people hating it's just odd because the internet is the internet it's fucking lawless it is fucking sodom and gomorrah you just enjoy the shit show and you just keep it moving but i've always found it very interesting and very odd how stand-up comedians on podcast would be like Oh, um, I don't understand why people hate, uh, or they'll say this comment about comedians like, oh, I don't like, it's so good comedy right now because we all get to like, put, you know, we all come with each other's podcasts and we get to bring each other up, all this sort of nonsense. And I never understood that because I feel like these comedians, especially the ones within the JRE verse, if, if there's anyone you could hate, if you're an up and coming comedian, it would be them. Because most of their careers have been propped up by the friendship they have with Rogan. Most of them. So I never understood why these guys think like no one can hate them. How no one can maybe envy them. Especially if they're in the same scene. When their careers aren't necessarily proportionate to their level of talent. You know? Like if anything, those guys are easier to hate because of their friendship with Rogan as opposed to the other people who are trying to get out the mud, you know? I never understood that kind of way of thinking, like, how can you hate me? There's, there's, oh, or they'll say like, um, just because I've got an opportunity doesn't mean it takes it away from you. It's like, mm, it kind of does though, isn't it? Because there, there isn't an infinite amount of fans out there. There's only certain amount of money is divvied out to a certain level of comedians. So maybe if all the top comedians are terrible, but they're famous and they're getting all the money, that's obviously going to have a trickle down effect on the guys who are coming up <laughs> because all the guys holding the wealth are the ones at the top who are shit. Look at the list of nominees of the Golden Globes for the best specials. Not the greatest, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Um, and naturally, comedians anyway, as we've seen with them with podcasts, they pick up Sarlux. Nice cap prove. Yeah, you know what we're doing. You know what we're doing. You know how we do it. Big up Salux, appreciate it, bro. Um and also comedians, as we've seen with podcasts, they're very bitchy. They're very backstabby. They're very snaky. So I don't know, man. I think, you know, I don't know. There's an element of me that I think the lady protests too much. I honestly think behind the scenes they all talk about each other. They all are very jealous. They all think they deserve what the other person has. So when they say the things that they say about, oh, I don't know how people can hate, it's just like, really though? Anyway, let's watch uh, Tune Town. So, um, Tune Town. Oh yeah, big up, big up. Um, what's that? Big up, Sir Easy Tiger. Been watching your vids for a while. First time tuning in. Great takes and you're hilarious, bro. Positive vibes, y'all. Big up, Sir Easy Tiger. Appreciate you tuning in appreciate the kind words and welcome to the greatest show on earth where we sit here as lowly regular civilians who haven't accomplished much pointing and laughing at people who've accomplished far more than we have <laughs> and have way more in the bank than us because guess what it's fun <laughs> and we have nothing else better to do with our time so that's what we do we just point and laugh <laughs> even though most of these people could hire contract killers to kill us in our sleep some of them could kill us with their bare hands brendan <laughs> it doesn't matter it, it brings us a lot of joy to just point and laugh at them like i've said plenty of times here i don't watch reality tv it's not my thing but the one thing i do do is this 
this is my reality TV. The Bapa verse, the GRE verse, this is my my six hundred pound life. This is my love island. This is my dating in the dark. This is it. <laughs> and I'll be damned if someone tries to stop me. I'll be damned. Anyway, let's move on. Tune Town episode three. I think so. But I think it was called that. I don't know if it was called that and they changed the title, but now it's called Brendan Shaw Learn to Drift. So I guess Brendan has changed his content um, strategy because he said Toontown episodes were so hard to make and there was so much work that he was only going to drop them, I think, every, what, every two months or something stupid like that. So I guess now he's changed his course and he's trying to build the channel. So he's now dropping these little bits in between the four episodes. So this is Brendan Shaw learns how to drift. Let's see this one. Brendan Shaw learns how to drift. Let's watch this. Also, I haven't watched this video yet, but it does say Brendan learns to drift. I hope he gets behind the wheel because we don't really see much of Brendan driving like and doing stuff. It's just him going to garages and getting his car modded you know he doesn't really like do stuff so let's let's see does he actually get behind the wheel <laughs> that logo as well get it tune town the car tire represent the car and the logo to represent like you know looney tunes get it So fucking basic, bitch. What's up, guys? Today I'm here at Willow Springs. It is oh, that mustache again. That fucking mustache. What's up, guys? Today. Come on, Brendan, bro. What is with that side? Do you think he's a bit blind in that eye? Do you think? Do you think maybe he's got like a dead eye? What is it about this side mustache? Please, somebody explain. Why is it? Why does it right hand side just not even? How hard is it just to go like that? Like, just cut this bit here. This. That's it. Just that bit there. So it falls into the in in the in line with the crevices of his cheeks. How hard is that to do? Just to go like that. Just to go, okay, I'm gonna cut my mustache and I'm going to follow my 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 smile what my cheek lines or whatever these lines are called, your line cheeks or whatever. This. I'm just gonna follow this. Or if you do want it longer, just, okay, I want it to be, to drop just underneath my fucking, um, the crevice of my, the side of my lips there. If you want to do that, fair. But why is one always longer? God damn. Hey, I'm here at Willow Springs. It is one of the top racetracks in all the land, and I want to learn how to drift. So I sent out the bat signal to one of the very best drifters, and he is a badass. It's Andy Hately. What's up, guys? And he's teaching me how to drift. You can drive your ass off. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank you, man. It's dope. Yeah, it's uh, it's what I do. It's like having the most fun you could have with a car. Yeah. Period. Okay. Can I be picky? What does Toontown have to do with drifting? If you're going to frame your car around, if you're going to frame your car show around being a car show where you do mods, and shit. What does drifting have to do with that? I mean, everything that you're not supposed to do with a car, you do it. You, you hit stuff with it. And go that near walls. So fast, man. Yeah, and yeah, we're putting another uh, two hundred. <laughs> Real gearhead conversations. Wow, it's fast. <laughs> Real gearhead shit. 
It's fast. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> horsepower in it this year we're at like 750 ish right now we're gonna be up around a thousand next year with the new magazine yeah. yeah so yeah my bad nj gear gear head gear head yeah gear head not gear head gear head <laughs> horsepower sluts that's what it should be called that's what you should call his show horsepower sluts <laughs> That's if he cares about horsepower sluts. Yeah. Cool, man. Check this out. So for those of you not in the drift world, Andy's changed his time. The drift world. Oh, like you, you mean. The drift world. <laughs> tires out right now. After every single run, they have to swap mm. the tires out. About a minute of fun, and then you got to switch tires out. Every single time. We got beer, this one is still hot. I mean, there's nothing. Apparently you gotta wear- I didn't know that. I had no idea when you drift that you had to change your tires. I didn't know that. I just assumed your tires are perfectly fine. I just assumed all that smoke was just like smoke in the nightclub. It, it, you know, it wasn't coming, it wasn't real. It was just smoke that you were pressing. I never knew that if you drift, <laughs> You had to change all your tires. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, I didn't know burnouts was actually you burning a <laughs> deep tread on your tires. Wear a helmet during these things. You see the tortellini here? Oh. Like a glove? This thing is stunned. It's not dead. What's up, Dan? There's no way to look. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. Cool in a helmet. Are you nervous? Uh, um, full transparency. I don't know. A lot of trust goes into this. This is a little BMW. Okay, I don't trust BMWs. Yeah, I got kids. Imagine this how I go. They call it, he was what? He was drifting in a BMW? Tell my kids I was doing something cool, right? If I go, just be like, oh, he's racing, man. He's in first. Hmm. Insulting the person's car that you're going to drift in is a little bit tasteless, no? No? Person. You ever seen that Ford vs. Ferrari movie? It's like that. Yeah, look at this concoction. Well, grab that harness so you don't sit on it. Like that. Like that. Glove? Oh. All right. He said thick boys can't drift. <laughs> I fit pretty good too. I got leg, leg room. Anything happens, pull this guy forward. This guy, you twist and to come out. Okay. This door is fiberglass. If anything happens bad, you can push this motherfucker and get out of the car. All right? Okay. Just FYI. Are you nervous? Oh. Oh, yeah, you're talking to a main film. Is that a new editor? They get a new editor involved. What's this? I heard several times. So. <laughs> I was fucking. Uh, BMW. They don't trust BMWs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's This redact needs to be at home with his kids. You read my mind, Ricky Pitcher. You fucking read my mind. I was just sitting here thinking, what a waste of time. What an incredible waste of time. That's the one thing I was thinking about sitting here watching this. I was thinking about what a waste of time. Like, what is this? Who's this for? What use is this? Like, yeah. 
Maybe as well. Maybe it's not even a because sh- it, it feels like it's just a way for him to create content of him doing cool stuff. You know, it doesn't really service anything. It's just let me record me doing these things. And if I can make some money out of it, I'll do it or get some free stuff. But it's not really for us to watch. It's not for the in it's not for view it's not for yeah it's not for the entertainment of viewers he's not trying to put on a good show you know that's what it feels like (laughs) a big NJ ranger we can't laugh at the helmet BC Matt Rife is a hack. <laughs> exactly, NJ Ranger, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but Ricky Pitcher, do you think his wife kicked him out of the house so he could just do this bullshit? So do you think so he's just doing this bullshit? Nah. His wife is never kicking him out of nowhere. Nah. I think he's I think he does this because he can get away with it. You know, his wife basically leaves him alone. There's no pressure. Um, and he's generally bored. I think people under people don't talk about how much, how lonely he must be. Since Rogan left and since all the Bobby Lee drama went down and the Annie Lederman thing, I think it's obvious to see that Brendan is kind of on his own. Apart from people he hangs around with at Thick Boy. He doesn't really hang out in any, any other comics. You know what I mean that com that comic circle he had is gone. That's a big group of his social life and shit. So yeah, he's just really bored. That's what I get from him. I get really bored and really lonely. Um, so that's what turns into like you know buying a million cars and doing all this nonsense and shit. Especially now the comedy gigs have kind of slowed down. I just feel he's really lonely. Pick up Stinger Goo. He sure has a lot of free time for someone with a busy schedule. But we know he's not busy anymore, don't we? Let's see. Does the T5K site still not back? Let's see. Because every time I try and load it, it doesn't work. Let's actually see his gigs. Let's see. Bear me a second. <clears throat> Come on, load, you piece of shit. Is it loading? Oh, maybe it's blocked again. Okay, cool. Let's go Brendan Shaw gigs. Let's actually see how busy he is. Let's see his tour days. Let's see. January 25th, 26th, only one day in March. Only two days in fucking in no one one day in Fe- one day in February, two dates in March, three dates in March, yeah, thin in it, very very thin on the ground, very very thin, and let's go look at somebody else. Let's go look. I don't know. Let's see what Theo's doing. Let's see Theo's tour dates as a comparison. Booked and busy. No more Jan dates, but he's February is fucking stacked. He's going to Charlottesville, Raleigh. He's going to Columbia, Knoxville, State College, Syracuse, Amherst. He's in New Zealand. Fucking hell, Australia. God damn, Atlanta. So yeah, you see the difference. You see the fucking difference. Is he going to... Brendan learns to drift. We're now over halfway through and we haven't seen him in a car on learning how to drift. Is that clickbait? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> the smoke. Did you see anything? Oh yeah, so fun. Dude. <laughs> you like head straight into the that, wall. That was like, honestly oh. like a mellow ride, dude. Fuck, dude. <laughs> a boy can drive, huh? Cause it's, it's a trip how sideways. I mean, you're going almost backwards it's, on that initiation. Yeah, yeah just don't you feel lift natural. Weight, yeah. And then the, the wheel speed kind of calms down a little bit, and the car naturally wants to rotate back, and you just get back in the you throttle. And in yep, yep. That thing moves, man. Yeah. That straightaway is a bird. It's a bird. <laughs> Is that what he talks about? How fast things are? Nothing else? No conversation about the about the fucking control, about the traction, about how it feels, about how it sounds. Very fast. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> the guy's got the fucking car knowledge of a fucking Hot Wheels. <laughs> is that he was Scale Electric's fucking car knowledge? Oh, this is really fast. <laughs> <laughs> vroom vroom it's dope yeah andy my man i can't thank you enough dude no I've problem learned so man. much you're an app he didn't learn to drift though why is it drifting absolute wizard when it comes to this stuff thank you man you're the perfect man for the job so i appreciate it, man it's been so much fun here no problem At willow spring so i appreciate it brother till no next problem, time dude. uh what's up with this lightning man we're gonna do some burnouts? We're gonna whip it around or what? I guess I'm an expert now. I mean, that's a trail on the tires. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Well, let's do it. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs>
Yeah, this has to be a tax write-off. This has to be. That was awful. Fuck you. Know? And again, it didn't. He didn't learn how to drift. He didn't learn how to drift. He said he learned. To, he didn't. That guy that was there, he was drifting. And then at the end, Brendan went and did something with his fucking lightning. But that wasn't like he didn't learn how to drift. We didn't see him learning how to drift. Or even explain the history of drift. Whatever. It was just. Uh, I don't know. But maybe this is his idea of a good car show. Just some dude. You know. Hanging out with people that have cars. And just. What? Putting shitty copyright music behind it. And shit. Copyright free music. And hoping for the best. <sighs> That was fucking awful. God damn. I can't get back those minutes. I definitely cannot get back those minutes. Bloody hell, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> oh my god, bro. How does this guy watch that stuff back and is okay with it? Anyway. Anyways, what are you guys saying in the stream chat? You can also use it as a demo reel and you can try and get a network or something, maybe. Oh, demo reel, demo reel. If if what Adriana is saying is true, that is peak delusion. If Brendan's actually doing this as a way to create um a portfolio of sorts, that is insane. If he actually thinks a network, a TV company would actually pick this shit up. But it would, it, I, w I wouldn't put it past him that he actually thinks this show is good enough to be on TV somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, big up NJ Ranger, appreciate you. Bro, I'm dead. I call this was a Fugazi thing. 100. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It's definitely Fugazi. The, the... I'm no, I'm, I'm going to take it back. I, I don't know, man. There's people out there that enjoy a lot of bad content. They just want to watch stuff, you know. I I think we should not discount that there are some people out there that just enjoy watching shit content, and there's some people that enjoy making shit content, and sometimes they don't know it. So maybe Brendan, in his head, he thinks this is his show is like better than Top Gear. Maybe he thinks that. Like maybe he thinks his show is better than you know when Top Gear was good. <laughs> maybe he actually thinks that. That would be delusional, I know, but don't put it past him. Because our tastes are different. We don't think it's good, but he might actually think it's good. Anyway, let's continue here. Let's continue. Let's continue. Um, let's do some random clips from the subreddit. The first one is the new set has so much depth. <laughs> I love that they're running with a the depth thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I got to put the sound on. Bear with me a second here. Oh, Brandon, Thick Boy Shop. What is up, fam? It is Monday morning. Again with the mustache. Again. This is definitely his blind spot. He, he has a blind spot with this mustache. He has a blind spot. Because look at that. It's always the right-hand side. It's always. And it's just a little edit. A little clip here. A little snip right there. And it's lined up. It's always the right hand side. Maybe he just gets bored or distracted. Or he's that redacted where he just can't focus for like two minutes. He just leaves it. It's always this side. It's always here. Always that bit there. Always. What a weirdo. morning 901 a.m exactly pacific time welcome this is the same old show we've been doing i know you guys are like what's happening right now this is completely different oh my god what happened to the channel we just updated the set my boy brian johnson updated the set he builds all the sets here at thick boy firing the kid he did king of the sting golden hour he did brian super boring set he's done brian does Brian have his show? Is Brian podcast in Thick Boy Studios? 
always assumed it was at the old studio. So there is one show that is made in that studio that Brendan isn't on because, you know, I don't know if you can call it a network if technically all the shows you're on. It's a bit weird. All of them, Fight Companion set, and uh, Chin wanted a little refresher of this set, and so what Chin wants, we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, Brian Joseph. Brian Johnson, studio designer, Lex Friedman, CFO of a YouTube channel. Thick Boy is like, you know, Thick Boy is like on the cusp, on the cusp of the big time, bro. What Chin asked, we do, so this is the new set. Some, uh, It's a cool vibe. Yeah. You know what Brendan reminds me of? Like, do you remember that kid in school who would always like embellish what their dad did? So if their dad worked as a cleaner, they'd say their dad was, um, I don't know, import export or something. Like it wasn't even like they were ashamed. It was more so like they tried to make their dad seem way more accomplished than what they actually were. I think that's what Brendan is like when it comes to the studio stuff and the studio and the designers and the roles and stuff like he wants to appear like he's a big dog so i've got a cfo i have a studio designer producers different studio sets and stuff it's like bro just focus on making the shows good entertaining and fun for the fans instead of like all of this shit changing the sets of like how much is he paying the studio designer to do this shit like come on why are you employing a studio designer or I, uh, I'm positioned a little different. It's a little, you guys have more room now, right? I feel like you guys have more room. What's funny is like we have a little bit less room. It's really? kind of trippy. Yeah, it looks like more open. Yeah. But yeah, I hope you guys dig it. Same show, new set. We'll what adjust up? it a little bit too. We'll see. We'll see tweaks here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on, kid? Yeah, um, <laughs> you know what? I've said this before, and people killed me in the stream when I said this. Um, I agree with Sir Easy Tiger, and I said this before, that um, Golden Hour isn't that bad. The bad thing about Golden Hour is Brendan and how he's a center of attention. He, he like, I legit think if Brendan swapped seats with Chris and he made it like, he just lobbed, like he kind of acted like a host and he just lobbed topics at the guys and just kind of added bits and pieces and let eric and chris actually riff like actual comedians it would actually be pretty decent to watch but because he's there he kind of holds them back because he can't riff properly he's not that funny he always wants to be the center of attention so it kind of takes away from the quality of the show he's always the bad he's always the worst thing about all the shows everything the fire and the kid you know golden hour the fight companions he's he's the common denominator of what makes the shows worse is brendan <laughs> Brendan being himself is what makes the show's worth. Inter interrupting main character syndrome, thinking everybody wants to hear what he has to say, never taking a step back. Like he's that's a funny thing. Like all these shows, and he doesn't have a per he doesn't have a different not even personality. He doesn't have a different approach. It's not like when he gets on the golden hour, he takes a step back, and then when he goes on the fire and the kid, he kind of ramps it up. And then when he goes on his show, show, he's a bit quiet. It's like it's all the same version of him. It's not, he doesn't even he doesn't even calibrate his personality or how he talks based on the show, which obviously makes him worse because you know who wants to listen to the same Brendan on spread across five shows? No, thank you. But yeah, um, I'm just I'm just surprised. Not surprised. I'm impressed by the inability to maybe look within and try to improve yourself as a person as a host rather than just doing all this cosmetic shit surely there's something to be gained and gleaned from just saying you know what maybe there's something that i'm doing wrong that's not allowing me to connect with my fans or that's not making the shows fun maybe not whatever it may be exploring a little bit of that doing a bit of self-inventory a little bit of reflection and then approaching the show differently as opposed to just changing the set like what does that actually do such an odd way to go about things but again we do, shouldn't be surprised in it when it comes to Brendan we bloody shouldn't be surprised um continuing on from that let's get some other clips here da, 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 da. what do you got to talk about bear with me a second what's this one okay we've got Papa being Papa what's this one about Papa being Papa bear with me a second I'll get it to load and take it off of mute boom okay let's see Papa being Papa what's this one about Mr. Uh, Dana White, and, and we are doing a fight campaign in Austin. What's the Mr. 
Mr. Joseph Rogan, Mr. Dana White. What's the this whole Mr. thing? Is that like a what is that? Is that like a is that like a bit? Is he trying to suck them off? What's this whole Mr. Mr. What's, what what are these formalities? Why is he using these words? Why? Austin, Texas with Mr. Joseph Rogan. So you got Joseph Rogan, Joseph Diaz. <laughs> he struggled there. <laughs> he thought Joey Diaz couldn't be short for Joseph. Like, hold on. If Joe's short for Joseph, what's Joey short for? Big up, Matthew. What's up, Dallas? <laughs> what's up, Dallas? <laughs> 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 I don't know why that makes me laugh. Every time I hear that, every time I see that written, I can hear his voice. <laughs> He comes out of that fucking... He comes out on that stage like he's at Madison Square Garden. What's up, Dad? Like, he comes out on that stage hot. Like, as if he's, like, in a fucking stadium. <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show, like... Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Big up, Matthew. I love it. What's up, Dallas? I fucking love it. And Eddie Bravo and myself. They're both bodied up. And that's some other guy. But... That's the liver king on the left. <laughs> that's the Brazilian liver king. Why are they pumping their wieners in there? Like, why at his age would you go to the PFL and hope they can mustard up some contenders that people are interested in? He said mustard. No way he said mustard. He said mustard. Hope they can muster it up. He said mustard. No fucking way. Like why at his age would you go to the PFL and hope they can muster it up? <laughs> Must. He says mustard. He says the D at the end. I thought he just said muster and they just put the, the emoji on there just for shits and giggles. He actually says mustard. Oh my God. This guy's a fucking redact. Would you go to the PFL and hope they can mustard up some... <laughs> wow. He has two college degrees. He's a multi-millionaire, you know? He's a multi-millionaire. Mustard. <laughs> oh, mate. And you wonder why you get hate. Like, can you, can, again, like, I'm not one of those people, but can you imagine, can you imagine struggling to pay your bills? <laughs> and then you see this guy. <laughs> sitting in his gold palace saying they're struggling <laughs> trying to muster up interest for this fight mustered up interest what calling a pillow a pillow saying drawl with an l at the end thinking giraffe was pronounced giraffe can you imagine how furious his pure existence will make you feel you're trying to hold down two jobs keep a roof over your head have some food in your belly and this guy's saying mustard up <laughs> driving a purple porsche <laughs> life isn't fair <laughs> um, contenders that people are interested in and clive's one in a tough time. spot one more time. because one more time. One more time. some contenders that people i found hope they can mustard up some contenders that people mustard up some hope they can mustard up some contenders that people are interested in and clive's in a tough spot because you know he said those draws you know he had the weird draw with uh how do you pronounce draw draw how 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 
you know, he's had those draws, you know, he had the draws. because draws. He wears underwear. You know, he's had those draws, you know, he had the weird Weird draw with uh What's weird draw? What is that? Is that like a Uniqlo underwear? What's what counts as weird draws? H and M? Target? What's weird draws? Buying your drawers from big and tall? What counts as weird? Cause I don't think so. I think all drawers are created equally. Whether you're wearing Amazon Basics or fucking Calvin Klein's, you know what I mean? You're still going to get fucking skid marks on them, so what's the point? <laughs> you know? But if you're talking about a draw, that's different. But draws. Draws. God damn. One more time. One more time, please. And Clive's in a tough spot because, you know, he said those draws, you know, he had the weird draw with uh, our boy. Our boy. I talk to him every day. Great guy. Never met him. Great guy. Never met him. Fucking hell. Absolutely brilliant. Draw. 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 Okay. Cool. Draws. Mustard up. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Cat must be talking about other comedians. Oh yeah, this is a good clip. This is a brilliant clip. So obviously after all that, you know, after the viral success of Cat Williams' interview on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp, um, some of the stuff that he said on there pertaining to Joe Rogan, the JRE verse, the Bapa verse, and all those, you know, the Hollywood elites of stand-up comedians, right? Um, the podcast conglomerate, right? The the, the unfunnies, right? That one thousand unfunnies. Um, it's just a throwaway thing that fucking Cat Williams said about you know, Joe Joe wouldn't have me on his show. He's too busy promoting six of his friends who are not funny. It's a bit of a throwaway comment, but it was a. Um, it was a good riff. It was a good um, what's a reflection? It was a good little quip because it kind of you know essentially gets at people's problem with Joe, in that he platforms a lot of shit comedians, and then they go out there pretending as if they're like the best in the world when really it's like, mm, are you the best in the world or are you just friends with Joe Rogan? So that's what he was basically calling out, as opposed to like you know Rogan actually going and having funny comedians on. One of the things I've always kind of think thought about myself is like. Why is I would love to see Bo Williams on there? Hmm. Man, let's play the clip. Oh shit! No sound. My, my my bad. 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 This is hard. <laughs> wow. No, read the Rogan one. Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on a show. Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. Um, it fuck says, you. Bro, this- I'm funny. He's one of my favorite comics, and I'd love to have him on. Joe said, "We we have we talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen." Yeah. People people are DM me. Go. He's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I went. I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight science. Yeah. There's no. But I- what? What? I'm not there for comic relief. I'm there for my fights. I haven't analyzed it, but I'm pretty sure if you break down his appearances, they're mostly because of comedy. I'd assume so. But still, regardless, who's tuning into JRE to listen to Brendan's fight picks? If anything, over the years, because of his inability to research, because of his refusal to research, because of just his dumb redactness, I actually think his fight knowledge. His reputation within fighting has actually gotten worse over the years, you know. That's a weird thing. Oddly enough, I think his reputation has definitely suffered way more over the years than his actual comedy. Because I think everyone kind of knew he was always shit at stand-up from the beginning. But I honestly do think because of his terrible fight picks, because of his horrible hot takes, uh, you know, he's just... And he obviously puts them out there all the time. He's definitely suffered. His reputation has definitely kind of went down. And obviously nowadays there's, you know, recently anyway, there's been a, a whole big increase of people online 
creating content around the UFC and fighting in general. Um, there's way more competition. There's way more great people out there doing great stuff. Like even people with like very small channels that don't get many views who do incredible fucking fight, you know, card breakdowns and, you know, post fight fucking analysis and shit. And, you know, they do good. They, they're really good at, you know, predicting maybe up and coming fights. They do amazing fucking, you know, background research on fighters themselves and whatnot. You know, there's a lot of people there doing great fucking work great 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 fucking work so you know you can't just get away with just oh because i was a former fighter you need to listen to me it's like no nah, you have to come with a bit more than that so i don't think anyone really to be fair is ever listening to brendan for his fight knowledge i don't think so comic relief probably but the fight knowledge thing i don't think so so i love how he's refusing to accept that cat is probably talking about him. <laughs> it's up. It's other people. Who else are you talking about then? Your other friends. Are you going to defend them then? That's one in it. Imagine that. Let's say Cat Williams isn't talking about Brendan. He's talking about his friends. Are you going to defend him? Are you going to fight? I thought we were going to fight. I thought we were going to fight. Like, is he going to fight, or is he just going to tuck his tail and run? Let's see what he actually says. Let's go to the beginning one more time. This is hard. <laughs> wow. No, read the Rogan one. Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on a show. Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. Um, fuck says, you. This. I'm funny. He's one of my favorite comics, and I'd love to have him on, Joe said. We we have, we have talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen. Yeah. People people are damn me go, he's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I'm, like, I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight science. Yeah. There's no. But I'll tell he's you not time. Your fight science? Your fight sides? What? I don't know what that was. I don't know what, what you tried to say. There. About me. He's I saw Cat Williams at the Comedy Store a couple of times. He's a genius. Oh, Cat is a... Here's the thing. He's, I want no heat. Oh, hey, Cat, I'm with you. No, no, no. I'm dude, with you, man. He's as good. Whoever's your enemy is my enemy. When he's on, when Cat Williams is on the as a comic... The best. He is as oh, good as one of the best anyone who's of all ever time. stepped on... Oh. Anyone who's ever stepped on a fight. Yeah, he's top 10. He's just, he's just a little... He's a wild boy. I who's that guy? Who's that guy? Um... Is it Tim Heidecker or something? Who's the guy that does all the spoofs of podcasts really well? That end bit was so weird. It sounded like that Tim Heidecker. Is it Tim Heidecker? We does those spoofs, those satires of, of stand-up comedians. At the end, it was like, oh my God, yeah, he's a great guy. Oh my God, he's amazing. He's a beast. Oh my God, he's a Like, what the fuck was that at the end? Brian just said, but he's really funny. Brendan, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck was that? Been on there more times than anyone. I went... I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight science. Yeah. There's no. But I'll tell he's you not that. talking about me. He's I talking saw Cat Williams at the comedy store a couple of times. He's a genius. Oh, Cat is. Look at how they they try and fight over them. They're fighting over each other to suck Cat off. But then just when they started, they were like, he's not talking about me. It sounded like Brendan was about to hate. And then as soon as Bren Brian said, oh, he's a beast, it suddenly went to. It's a beast jack off, right? It started to go into it's a beast jack off. He's a beast, he's a beast, he's a beast, he's a beast. Like, wow, bro, this is so weird. Hey, he, my, here's the thing he's, I want no heat. Oh, hey, Cat, I'm with you, dog. No, no, no. I'm with dude, you. Man. He's as good. Whoever's your enemy, he's my enemy. When he's on, when Cat Williams is on the as a comic, best. he is as oh, good he has as one of the best anyone who's of ever time. stepped on. Oh. I didn't even hear that. He has one of the best specials out of all time. Which one? Can you name a special of his, Brendan? He has one of the best specials of all time. I'm almost certain Brendan's never heard Cat Williams. I'm pretty sure he's probably never watched more than 10 minutes of Cat Williams doing stand-up. Or maybe he's not even seen anything. Maybe he's seen him do movie roles, but I'm pretty sure he's never seen a single, a single Cat Williams special in four. I'm pretty sure of it. Maybe a clip here and there. Especially now because he's in the news and he's viral. But I'm pretty certain Brendan has never seen or watched a Cat Williams comedy special in his entire life. I'm pretty sure of it. Anyone who's ever stepped on the fucking... Yeah, he's top 10. He's just, he's just a little... He's a wild boy. I saw him. I mean... I <laughs> he's a wild boy for saying that Joe Rogan is too busy platforming comedians who are not fun in his show. I love how no one said nothing either. They didn't fight back because they all knew it was true. 
Um, and you obviously don't want to be the person to try and defend yourself because it's going to sound like he's talking about you. But I love it. He's a wild boy for suggesting that Rogan prioritizes promoting his friends who do stand up as opposed to people who are funny that do stand up. Okay. 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 But yeah, that was strange. That bit at the end was interesting. That that fucking about face turn from Brendan was fucking hilarious there. I fucking loved that. Every minute of that. I loved every minute of that. I'm not going to lie. Um, oh my God. Yeah, this is a great clip. So remember last time um, when we were talking and I was like, oh, um, did you guys see the clip of Rogan where he's fishing and shit, right? Um, I think... Well, be honest in case you appreciate it, brother. Whenever someone has asked Bopu about his favorite comedians or the best of all time, he has never mentioned Cat. But now he is top 10. Exactamente. Exact. I don't think I've ever even heard Brendan mention Cat's comedy outside of when he's in the news, right? When he's in the news, maybe he's fighting some kid, maybe he got into, maybe he fucking ripped into some fucking radio person, cool. But I've never heard him mention Cat like as just a you know, as an entertainment figure or as an icon in stand-up ever outside of the stuff that he does that gets him viral and into a new cycle. So for him to suddenly sit there and be like, yeah, you know I mean? Freedom fighter, speak truth to power. I'm a cat, big biggest fan. No one's a bigger fan of him than me. He's in my top 10. It's like, yeah, all right. I'm, <laughs> let me say this. I'm almost certain Brendan could have named 10 stand-up comedians he likes. Almost certain he couldn't, he doesn't have a top 10. I think he'd stop at like five or six. He doesn't even think, you know what I mean? I, like, that's one thing I think I realized pretty quickly about him when it comes to stand up. I don't think he ever sits at home and just watches old specials and tries to maybe understand, oh, how is this funny? Why did that work? And try to learn or, you know, whatever and take that into his stand up. So I don't think he, what he, I don't think he watches stand up at all, zero, not one single minute. Maybe his own content he probably watches, but I don't think he ever sits down one time and says, yeah, I'm going to watch some legendary stand-up comedians and kind of see if I can learn anything and that I can maybe add to my stand-up. Maybe how they stand, maybe, you know, fucking how they pace their words, you know, when they when they quiet, when they're not, you know, all these type of things. You never hear him talk about it. It's just purely how many shows can I do and how much money can I get paid? really really and truly um anyway so a big Austin case for that one i was wondering yes i was saying remember joe rogan he did a put a picture on his instagram of him doing um what's it what's it called is it fly fishing i don't know the one where you go and open in fucking the open sea right in the ocean and shit i forgot what the actual term is for it but he's fishing in there um obviously he's, he's catching really big fish and shit um and i was saying oh i wonder oh it's called deep sea fishing i said thank you cloud k20 it's called deep sea fishing um I was saying aloud, I wonder how long it's going to take for Brendan to start copying Joe and start deep sea, deep, deep sea fishing too. Because it's something that looks like would be good for content. It's, you know, maybe a bit of a learning curve, but not, you know, crazy. And he'll be coming at, in, into it with some level of an advantage. I just assumed that he would do it. And look at this clip in the final case I it. The very next day, or the very next podcast after Rogan's picture, that went like kind of you know viral within his community of him you know basically go to do fishing somewhere only the, the next day look what Brendan's saying on his pod look what he's saying only the next day oh it's on mute again god almighty it's all on mute i keep forgetting my bad ours whatever yep i can just focus on that i'll do all my i haven't reading. heard much about your fish bro you go from you oh my what? fish are thriving i just bought new fish <laughs> Is <laughs> was that a little bit of a sneak this there from Brian? I don't hear you talk about fish anymore. Oh, thriving! I just bought new fish. <sighs> no, you're just not into them, so I don't share it with you. Well, I mean, no, it's just I'm not, all I hear is truck, 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 is truck, truck, and I don't hear anything about fishy, fish, fishy. Oh no, my arowana is four foot. You're not over it? Hell no, my uh, fish. I don't know. Oh, ask him about his bike. Ask him about the whiskey. <laughs> ask him if he still drinks whiskey. There's, oh look there's not a single bottle of, oh look at that there's not a single bottle of tiger thick in the frame is oh no there's something there on the shelf okay cool i'm about to say but you can't visibly see there usually be one on the table or one here but that goes to show you how 
you know how much Tiger Fick isn't a isn't that important to them anymore. It's been pushed right to the back. It's behind the F. I think there's a bottle here behind Callan's ear, but there's no bot no bot on the table and none over there. Oh, every morning, bud. Yeah. Oh, bud. Hey, do fish are really easy to get atta attached to? I'm attached to my koi. I told you. I feed them. Oh no no no! We I got Irwanas in there now. I got seven Oscars. I got Pakus. I just bought a turtle. You got a turtle I got now. A turtle in there now. I have seven Oscars. Imagine Brendan actually won seven Oscars. <laughs> that would be wild. Imagine if he actually won seven Oscars <laughs> for his contributions to comedy or something. <laughs> Imagine seven Oscars. Oh shit. I got a catfish. What? I got a catfish. I bought them at like this. Yeah. That motherfucker. I love watching them grow. He's a sh uh, shovel nosed catfish. Jesus. No one told me they get so goddamn big. He eats. No one told me this used to be a running theme with him, innit? No one told me. It's like, bro, don't you research things? Don't you quickly jump onto Google or YouTube and see what what is this type of fish going to look like when it gets a bit bigger and shit? God damn it. Everything. He He's such a bully. Does he eat your other fish? Oh, yeah. That's a problem. That turtle? Fish head fish. on a swivel, turtle. Really? Because that catfish plays no games. <laughs> how old is your... Catfish is, your... I don't eight months old. He's enormous. See that? See that? That's me. Oh, my That's God. That's me every morning. Ugh. That's me oh. with my catfish every morning. Oh, shit. So I have to take food, that's big, big chunks of food, yeah. and throw it over there so he attacks that and then feed the other fish. Otherwise, how much is nobody the, eats. How much is... Really? Nobody eats. How much is the... Uh, how much food do you give him? Like just a, like a like a like a lamb leg or something. Thinking of the lie. Look at look at look. look that's a, that's I'm, I'm thinking. That's lie loading face. That is lie loading face. Big up NJ Ranger. If time permits, we should watch today's T Fat K just for twenty minutes until Bopper shows up, like an art house film complete with the inappropriate old lech and the ethnic babe. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll watch that next then. We'll watch that next. Then. Big up NJ Ranger. Appreciate you. That is lie loading face. Look at that. That is lie loading. He's waiting to think of the lie on the spot. So how much do you how much food do you give that fish? That is lie loading. Let's see what he says. That was a very direct question. That if you are actually still into your fish and you're not lying, you should be able to answer this very easily. Right? Let's see what the question actually was. The other fish. Otherwise, how much is nobody the, eats. How much is really? Nobody eats. How much is the uh, how much food do you give him? How much food do you give him? Look him in the finger the lie. Like just a, like a like a like a lamb leg or something? Oh I have to buy live fish for the iguanas in him. <laughs> There's like, a lot going on. Oh, every morning my Uh did you answer the question? That's like SeaWorld, dude. Yeah, how often do you have to feed fish? When they're juveniles, three times a day. But What? They, three times a day. Three times a day. <laughs> when they're juveniles. <laughs> <laughs> they go to a team they go to a juvenile correctional facility <laughs> oh, i love the lies i love the lies man i love how i love how he lies about everything bro do you brush your teeth yep <laughs> what why are you lying about brushing your teeth just brush them why would you lie about that you know it's like and I love it. Three they times a day. Happy. I thought like three times a week. No way, dude. I feed my fish every day. So they got to eat every the, day. The main fish, they can go like a week without eating. If I'm like on the road, they can go a week. It's not ideal, but it also cleans their system and it's good for the tank. But I, the the big, like the arowanas, I feed every day. There they eat a, bit, a, lot, a, ton, a ton. Live fish. They'll only grow fish. as big as the tank or what? No, no. no, no. Really? <laughs> I'll have to upgrade about a year. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, they yeah, keep yeah, growing. Yeah, nightmare. No one tells you this. No. But they do warn you at the pet store. They go, the, you'll see you're wanted in a tiny tank. It's like this big. And they yeah. always go, uh, they'll tell the parents, ah, those grow pretty fast. You, if you're going to just plan to upgrade if you can get those. They should say, hey, listen, so that fish right there, I know he's 100 bucks right now. He's going to cost you, I don't know, probably about five grand by the time he's fully grown. Because you have to upgrade your tank, the yeah, filters. Food. And I have two of them. Man's trying to, man's trying to convince Brett, Brian that he has hobbies. And that he doesn't just drop things, at, at, you know, and go on to the next thing because he has no personality and shit. Look, this is, he's really pleading his case here, isn't it? Like, bro, it's not that deep. If you still got fish, cool. What do you feed these fish? Does it People. <laughs> so you got to feed them. You got to feed them. Because I, I have fish flakes that I feed my 
koi. That's for bitch fish. Yeah, flakes, they would go, the fuck? It's like Parmesan they on a salad. They need, they need real fish. Oh, buddy. I, 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 what do you say? Parmesan. How do you say that? Parmesan. The fuck? It's like Parmesan on a salad. Parmesan. <laughs> Sean John salad. Parmesan. Eat my koi. That's for bitch fish. Yeah, flakes, they would go, the fuck? It's like Parmesan on a salad. They Parmesan. Palm a John. <laughs> that's like a, that should be like a mantra for fucking prozies, isn't it, right? For the old sex workers on the street. It's a new fucking, it's a new saying. Parmesan. Parmesan. If someone doesn't give you the money at first, Parmesan. <laughs> Parmesan. So you gotta feed Lizards. them. You gotta feed them because I, I have fish flakes that I feed my koi. That's for bitch fish. Yeah, flakes. They would go the fuck. It's like Parmesan on a salad. They need. They need real fish. Oh, buddy, I, I gotta. I, I have to go to the pet store twice a week. I just don't tell you because you're not into fish. Oh no, my life is fish and cars and kids. The lady doth protest too much. Your life is only cars now because you're bored of the other stuff and you got no friends. That's okay, but let's not pretend like you're into all those things. We've been Baron asking, how about the bikes? You still do, you still biking? <laughs> Fit Boy Bike Club? How's that going? Dude, fish cars and kids. Fish cars and kids. Fish cars and kids. You, you know, fish. people are God, family. Yeah, you fish cars and kids. Church like or whatever. Rogan. Fish cars and kids. Just like Rogan. yes. And just, you like just it like that Rogan. way. Oh, I'm but at uh, Aquarium City off. Uh, what is that off Sherman Way? I go. In, they know my order. I have to. Go, I have to go twice a week, dude, to feed these yeah. fucking fish. I see the big man. I have to get frozen fish. Yeah. I have to get big monster pellets. Yeah. I have to carbon. Now for what's the daddy doing? The lady doth protest too much. We know what the we know what the truth is though. We see it already. He's too transparent to read, man. He picks stuff up to you know take. He picks stuff up as a way to avoid hanging out with his family, especially his wife. I think his kids. He probably does. I think have a love. I think he has a lot of love unconditionally for his children. Luckily, but I think that wife of his. He definitely. He definitely would much rather you know drive his car off the PC PCH as he says than spend any quality time hanging out with his wife. You can tell she like you know even for brendan she's way too much of a read act like he can't handle it so he does do a lot of things that you know will take him outside of the house or keep him busy she doesn't have to interact with her on a daily basis and that's okay it's i'm sure that happens to a lot of married families you know it is what it is you just you know you learn to kind of tolerate each other but it's the refusal to admit it or acknowledge it that's a bit odd you know it's like bro you know what you're doing i mean don't I mean, come on come on come on come on, come on brother come on Come on, come on, come on. Anyways, um, let's continue here. Another one. Rink's comedy career not going well. What's this one about? Rink's comedy career not going well. Let's see what this is saying. Oh, you don't know how big Joe Coy oh, is in hilarious. our space. Yeah, that local. He does cool. arenas. You stupid idiot. Yeah. Fly. So because. Joe Coy does arenas. You can't say he had a shit set at the Golden Globes. You can't say that it was a terrible performance because he does arenas. That's a Brennan Shaw logic, isn't it? Because I saw tickets, you can't criticize me. I must be good because I saw tickets. No, not really the case. You can sell tickets and still be shit. Or people can think what you did is shit. It doesn't invalidate you that you sell tickets. It doesn't take away from you selling tickets. But just because you sell tickets doesn't mean you're impervious to criticism or push. That's just, anyway, it's weird. Anyway. Flies private. So yeah, he's crushing it. He flies private. Crush literally. It. It's like if a comic's flying private, they're just fine. Yeah, they're doing all right. Yeah. I am not flying private. No. Oh. If a comic is flying private, they're doing fine. What about putting on a good show what about being funny is that not okay or do we have to always look for all those other things as a mark of success fucking hell not about laughs and again um that's a even a cat with bigger cat williams that interview 
That's been a long time since I've heard a comedian say something about laughs in the room. Like, you know, like he said, oh, yeah, I used to study the greats. I used to count how many laughs they get. I was like, wow, somebody that takes pride in making people laugh. That's making a note. Okay, I got these many laughs. You don't really hear that because these guys are always about tickets and selling out tours and all this sort of shit. It's just another money-making exercise. They don't really care about putting on a good show for the fans. So it was quite refreshing to actually hear Cat Williams, you know, talk about how, you know, his grievances with the comedy world and mention, hey, I actually make people laugh more than these other people. You know, that was actually quite refreshing to hear. I'm not going to lie. I swear down. But yeah, big up them, I guess. Big up them. Um, what are you guys saying in the chat here? Sprinkle a little Parmesan in the fish tank. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Run it up. Exactly. Imagine she's perpetually bored and always needing money to buy stuff. Is that Adriana? My fish are harder than your fish. <laughs> exactly, Andy. I didn't even clock that. That's very true. Exactly. My fish are badder than your fish. Yeah. My dad can beat up your dad. <laughs> That's so true. I got the ba the baddest I got the baddest fish on the planet. You know what I mean? My fish are my fish are in the UFC, your fish are in the PFL. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh Brendan says at restaurants, lols. I just like the stream because I liked what I've been seeing and hearing. And <laughs> hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Big up NJ Ranger. Oh my god. Um, Robert Henry Perra, big up. Apparently, no famous comedian has been booed on stage last twenty years, according to Papa. Oh yeah, actually, I got that clip. Actually, yeah, big up, Andrew, big up, um, Henry Perra. I didn't actually. I've got that clip. That's actually funny. Let's watch that one. Then we watch the uh, Fighting the Kid. Of, yeah, this one's. This is. This is a brilliant clip. This might be one of the best clips in a what in a while because I remember this interview. Because you see, the comp like as much as he's a bit of a delusional narcissistic kind of dude you can definitely see the the sparkle in bright in brendan's eyes definitely dimmed even the pep he had in his step you know he doesn't sit as upright as in the past he doesn't talk with as much confidence you, you could tell back then back in this clip here as you can see in this video in these times he was flying high his style was never brighter he was really Joe Rogan's best friend. You could almost, it almost felt like Brendan kind of took Brian's spot for some weird reason. Even though Bren, Joe Rogan and Bren, and Brian have known each other 20 plus years and they've always remained close, it almost felt like Brendan took up Brian's spot in Rogan's life, you know, and he obviously benefited from, from it greatly. Access to people, networking, the exposure on the show, ads, all that good stuff. He got it from them. So back then, he was walking around like he was the shit, Brendan. Like he would speak a certain way. And I remember back then, like maybe a lot of the clips people don't want to dig dig into, but he would be really disparaging about other comedians and their lack of success. And be like, you know, they shouldn't be jealous. They should just work harder. Um, I'm coming into comedy with like an athlete mindset. That's why I can just work hard. I do sets and reps. I don't drink. That's why I'm crushing it. But like, like he would legit, he actually thought he kind of figured it out basically. Um, so this clip makes a lot more sense in the context of how he was back then. So you can definitely tell, you know, the kicks he's taken over the years have definitely kind of dimmed his star, but he's not as braggadocious as he was back then or delusional or just insane. Uh, comedy's just different. It's just different. I can control the narrative in comedy. You ever bomb so bad? Uh, you know, I, listen, so I, I really, I haven't to the... Most comedians, when they get given that question, it's an op it's an opportunity to be self deprecating and make yourself look normal, and make yourself look fallible, and make yourself somewhat relate to people because bombing on stage is kind of like a a represent it's kind of like an example. Mm. Bombing on stage is almost like a way for you to connect with your fan base because it shows, hey, I fail at things too. It's a way to make you almost a little bit relatable. Right, if that makes any sense even though you're not relatable because you're a middle-aged white dude that gets to pursue their you know their fucking hobbies as a career most of us don't get the opportunity to do that but the fact that you do that doesn't make you a relatable working class blue collar person because you know you have to have money to be able to sit on your ass for six months and try podcasting or go on the road and try comedy right that's not anybody not something everybody can do but still 
even the most privileged of comedians, even the most, the biggest nepper babies in the industry will at least try to pretend that they had some level of struggle and strife. You know, that's what they'll try and do in how they talk. But Brendan is like, nah, no way. Doesn't exist. What? Bom bombing? That's dumb. Why would he bomb for? You know what I mean? He just can't comprehend it in his head. I always sell out. I'm a beast of a guy. To the point where it's like crickets or I'm getting booed. Native Americans have beautiful hair. You never see a bald Native American. That's a legit That's point. You know, uh, the only time you see them bald if they get scalped. You feel me? Ooh. What? <laughs> I've seen a lot of bald Native Americans. You've seen a lot of, no, you've seen a lot Dog of bald face. Indians. Indian? No. What? Louis C.K., who's one of the greatest comics to ever do it, he goes, you got to bomb 10,000 times before you get good. Dude, listen, if you've ever sucked at anything 10,000 times before you got good at it, it might not be for you. It's just not for you, man. I love how he's so dense, he couldn't understand what Lucy K was trying to say about that 10,000 hour thing. In his head, he just thinks, what? Because comedy happened from so quickly, for like, I don't know. The fact that he couldn't understand the analogy that Lucy K was trying to use with that 10,000 hours thing just says everything about the level of intelligence this guy has. And it's just like, oh my God, the comprehension skills are crazy. It's not for you. Okay, cool. So if you get two comedy specials voted two of the worst comedy specials of all time, does that also mean it's not for you? Like what? What made you go and be like, all right, I'm going to go do stand-up comedy and go bomb, bomb forever? forever. Uh, well, bomb forever is interesting. But, bomb, uh, bomb, nope, you know. Brandon. I want nope. some dick, dude. <laughs> I love that clip. Bomb forever. <laughs> He, uh, but you know what? I come from uh, the Jocko school of learning. I good, went, good. Yeah, as we say. A lot of money. Or they went by oh, and were oh. like, 90210 sucks. And he freaked the fuck out. Melrose Place is better. Don't you think YouTube's going to demonetize that we show the I vagina? This. I don't I think this. so. It's kind this. of a woke movement. You don't know my pronouns. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, honestly, that was so, such a weird setup. That's kind of like a woke movement. You don't know my prone, like what? He just, he, he just, you could tell he doesn't read the stuff that he sees online. He just kind of says stuff. That's a woke movement. A woke movement. I guess he was trying to say, um, what? That's not progressive or something, right? Maybe that's what he's trying to get at. That's not progressive to take a piss out of my man, John. That's not very accepting or something, right? Or maybe. But he said he said woke movement. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> that was so weird. Melrose Place is better. Don't you think YouTube's going to demonetize that we show the vagina? I don't think so. It's kind of a woke movement. You don't know my pronouns. <laughs> the guy's face, like... This guy's got a mansion. This guy just arrived here in the limousine and he's like i have to take the bus to the comedy clubs <laughs> he's like what <laughs> he can't understand <laughs> yeah yeah no that was beautiful all right greatest bomber I of all time yeah all right <laughs> it's just not for you man Big boy squad. Big boy nation. Big taylor boy lewis squad. knows Big taylor lewis nation. knows he knows he knows he knows, he knows. He knows. He sucks still. He knows. Taylor Lewin knows. He knows. He knows. The faces he was making, he fucking knows. He fucking knows. Um, next clip here. Where in Austin? Where you at in Austin? Oh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Where you at in Austin? This is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Oh, this is brilliant, the feathers. At my own club. <laughs> Look how embarrassed he was. Brand didn't want to say it. Brand didn't want to mention it. He felt so bad. Yeah, I'm going to Austin. Um, Joe said I could come, but 
I'm not too sure if I'm gonna go. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be tired and the flight. You know, how I am with a jet lag. You know, he, he didn't want to say. He was like, he's looking down, so embarrassed. He felt so bad for Brendan. Like <sighs> my controversial hot tech opinion on that as well. I kind of feel bad for him as well when it comes to comedy motion. Sure I'm not going to lie, because even though he doesn't deserve to perform there, it's just really if you're Rogan, you brought him on stage at the comedy store. You invited him to, you know, or he was part of your Joe, Joe Rogan and friends at the comedy store. You probably got introduced to him. You probably helped him get intro at the other comedy stores in LA back in the day when he was super unfunny, more so than he is now. And then all of a sudden you get your own, you know, you get your own club and now suddenly you have standards. I would be annoyed if I was Brendan. I'd be really, I'd, I don't know, I'd be kind of furious. You, so I was I was okay, I was good enough for the comedy shop. I'm not good enough for your club. Big up Sammy Bull, Sammy Bully. Sorry. I think he has extra income, so he picks up hobbies. I've been the car guy. I've had multiple fish tanks in the house last month. It was guns. Now I'm looking at cars again. Low eyed. I disagree. I think. People like you exist who just have disposable income and maybe some time and you just do fun shit for shits and giggles. They do exist, right? Guys are just like, fuck around because why not? But I think what Brendan is doing is different because it's like, it's almost like he's trying to find himself with the, you know what I mean? There's different from just like being a guy that has to buy nice cars and you want to you go on a gun range a few times you might buy yourself a nice bottle of whiskey here and there you love your wine but i feel like the the sad thing about brennan is like it feels pathetic because it feels like he's trying to find himself in his early 40s or something through like these things that he's getting into and he can't seem to find it but, and, the, and the bad thing is it's not even like he sticks with the stuff he drops off so he dropped whiskey he dropped um running he dropped bike club thing the cycling um he most likely dropped fishing all in the favor of cars and even the cars thing he was into cars he was into like buying expensive cars buying really fast cars right and then all of a sudden he turned into now buying being what a gearhead doing mods and stuff like what and also never touching a spanner you know never getting his hands actually dirty that's the funny thing about it it's like whoa that's all that's the difference i think that's the difference but big up um sammy bully appreciate you That's got to hurt. Brian Callum, fair enough, but Eric Griffin, he's not even that close to Joe, I don't think. He's not been on the show that much. Joe doesn't really talk about him that much. Even though Eric Griffin doesn't really talk about Joe that glowingly. I never, I don't know. I always thought there was a bit of static between them. I guess not. But when fucking Eric Griffin got a weekend there. <sighs> <sighs> that, that's got to hurt. If you're Brendan, that's that's why I feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie. A part of me is like, fuck, bro. That guy, that guy, like he treated you like um, he treated you like your high school friends, right? Your your friend in high school, and then they they go away to college and they completely forget about you. They stop answering your calls. They stop calling you. That's what it kind of felt like, you know. That's what it kind of felt like. <laughs> you got new friends, and Brendan didn't exist anymore. The club. Ouch, I'm at the Vulcan, not the comedy mothership. Just let's be clear about that. And the fact that he had to admit the reason why he's not the comedy mothership is because he's not funny enough, and Rogan said that, and that he's okay with it. He doesn't, no, you know, at, at Skankfest, he said, Oh, I'm okay with not playing there because I'm, I'm not ready yet, and I don't want to repeat the same mistakes. So he tried to be self deprecating and say, Whatever. But he had to get drunk 
he had to get tipsy to admit that we all knew that to be true but that that goes to show you how fragile his ego is that he had to drink himself silly to admit that he's not good enough or he's not funny or maybe you know his career trajectory is now starting to hurt him because people are realizing that you know if you prop somebody's career up and they're actually not funny it can be hard to justify them hanging around you know so hey what can you do Yo, big up Stradley, appreciate you. The better question is, have you ever not bombed? I just can't understand why he takes that as an offense. That's, that's maybe more evidence that he's not a comic. I don't understand why he's, he hears the word bombing. And for him, it just sounds like a bad, like a an intrinsically bad, bad, bad thing. Like, oh, I can't bomb. Look at me. I'm, do you know what I mean? He doesn't get it. He doesn't get that. If you're actually trying to be funny, you're most likely going to bomb. If you think about it, if you're actually trying to put together good jokes, write clever ones, you're going to bomb a lot. It's the nature of the game. Sometimes you can bomb for like nine days straight. And then by the 10th one, you just hit your groove oddly enough. And I'm going to say that. And I know, I'm only saying that because I know that happens because I remember when I used to DJ often, I had a similar thing. Sometimes when you try things and you maybe push the limits and you, you know, you want to be maybe a little bit more creative, a little more spontaneous, you're going to maybe bomb. But over time, you start to kind of, you know, it becomes a little bit more intuitive. You start to realize where you're going wrong and you can correct course very quickly. But I don't know. I, I love how he needs head. When he hears bombing, he's like, he hears of them actually dropping bombs, you know? I know. Oh, shit, it yeah. makes me want to jump off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> I love that script. We first showed it to you on KTSM first at 430, but we do want to warn you the video you're about to watch may be disturbing for some viewers. Now, this happened on Wednesday. According to Texas DPS, a trooper attended to uh, make a traffic stop on a pickup truck, <laughs> but the driver did not stop and try to get away. The truck comes to a halt at the West Paisano Bridge, actually jumps off the bridge. This is all happening here on your screen. Can, can you imagine as a news platform showing that on TV? Hey, I know this is not going to be good, but like, can you imagine? Like, why would you even show that? <laughs> this might be distressing to some viewers. No, it's going to be distressing to all viewers. Whoever doesn't find it distressing, you should probably, you know, contact them or something. Most people are going to find that distressing. Most people are going to look at that and be like, you know what? That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Mamma mia, bro. What a weirdo sometimes. What can you do? What can you do? Like I said, I still feel bad for the guy because I think, hey, if Rogan was okay with him performing at the comedy store, not letting him perform at the mothership is cruel. Really, it really is cruel. Especially all the comedians are talking about with such glowing turns. But I guess in the long term, it's a good thing for the brand because it shows that they have some level of is it integrity and whatever maybe to make sure, you know, they're only collaborating with the right people and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. Okay. I'm not mad at it in the slightest. I really, really, really am not. Um, I think that might be it for now. And then I'll probably do another one tomorrow. Um, what, what, what can we do here? I think I've done most of the clips on here that I wanted to check out the big ones. Uh, uh, uh. yeah i think i've done most of the big ones already so we've got some other things to talk about but i'll i'll save that for the next stream um oh yeah the t5k one yeah that's the one nj yeah so i'll say different let me actually write that down um so that was the previous episode i'll save that for the next stream i'll do that for the next stream i'll add it to a list um for the next random show i will talk i will watch because i think he means the one with um the one where brian callen appeared late and so brendan appeared late and it was just brian trying to you know fake familiarity and banter with fucking the new interning chin it's always going to be a hoot so we check that one out that should be funny 
<laughs> oh, that should be good. That should be fucking good. That really should be good. Oh, and there's obviously the what's that? There's that clip about Brendan arriving late in it, right? And I think that was indicative, probably, of where he, of where he's at with that podcast. I think. Let's see if I can quickly talk about that one, because I think that for me is a great example of where they're at really in their careers all of them i think that's just a great representation of it simple as that nothing more to say um you know they're an autopilot they don't take the podcast seriously anymore um you know it kind of pays for itself it works without them really having to do much um and they can kind of get away with turning up you know when they want to turn up basically um let me see if i can get on here let me see yeah, there, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. This one. Okay. Yeah, I got all my tests back. Is hey, this the first time I'm late in 12 years? Not bad. You're an hour late, though. Uh, an hour? And I got here a half hour early, so this is a bad day. A bad day for you, because usually, it, you know. Well, you were doing your, you. I knew I knew when you said it. Oh, uh, hey, when I say a problem, you yeah. know, because I can't stop messing with my cars and trucks, yeah. change out the torque converter to some ITRX. You couldn't just grab the cough the coke on your way into the studio you had to sit down and have some again like he definitely has a thing for like wanting to look like a big dog having all that like, people handing him drinks like that. you couldn't just quickly grab one on your way in if you were late really you don't really you don't just don't just have them sitting on the other side somebody has to stand up and give you it as if you're fucking don lemon or something come on bro we have plans for it to put a bigger blower on for Magnuson, so it's gonna be at like fourteen hundred hours. But that's it's not a big deal. That's important. so important. Uh, electric though, that's cool. No, but um, so the torque converter, the piston, the rods. We've done all this stuff in the drive shaft. I'm going down the road, and I'm like, oh, that something's you know, just when you mess with it, something's right. off. Oh. I'm like something's off, and then I can tell the alignment's off. So then I was like, you know what? So he came. So he tried to go to a garage before recording a podcast, thinking he would be able to just do it quickly. Like, yeah. I looked at the, because I came from the doctor, dropped the fam yeah, off. Doctor, car, doctor, car, podcast. Those are probably the priorities at the moment, right? Family, trucks, and then the podcast is dead last. Name is despair? No, it was, it was, it was 10 o'clock. I go to, I can get this done sure. 90 minutes easily. Yeah. Pull in the guy's like, we got you. It's my boy, Mark. He's like, oh, we got you, man. We'll get you in there. I'm like, cool, man. Yeah. Dude, I mean, three hours later, well, I, had, I, I go, I go, dude, I got to get going. Like I'm supposed to do a show. I go, give me a drill. So then I'm doing the back tires. He's doing the. Fr this sounds like that. You remember that clip of, um, what's his name? Who's that dude with the beard when, when the shoot was happening in Las Vegas and he tried to out and he asked the cop to give him a gun? <laughs> Is it fucking Dan Belzerian? Remember that famous Dan Belzerian clip where the cop with the with the cam, with the body cam is like trying to return fire to that Las Vegas um, shooter, um, the one that killed those people. And then Dan Belzerian said, give me the gun. Like, really, dude? You went to a garage and these guys let you use their power tools. what knowledge of like fixing cars or you know tools do you have come on really <laughs> front oh damn no i got f shit on my knees what what what, was, like the, what was the problem the the alignment's completely off the was that a dick joke of course that had to be a dick joke there had to be one. drive shaft was was loose it was just, just your knees are stained that's weird yeah huh on the street dude oh on the street so you didn't want to pay but you said i got this mouth uh yes and whatever <laughs> it takes to get this done whatever it takes dude it's about your truck dude you'll see it though it's worth it you'll see it out there yeah you'll see it well i notice the difference no no you won't know that. Yeah, I mean again maybe representation of where the priorities are with the podcast and also um more proof that these pods are not that difficult to run they try to make it seem like they work hard they try and make it seem like they're always you know that their work ethnic is really high and that they're always on the go and they're always busy and blah 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 but it's like not really you call you make your own hours you turn up when you want to turn up 
and if anything you've got a baked in fan base that isn't going anywhere um you're perfectly fine you're never ever gonna have to work on you know work a normal job in your life you've got you know a family with money and shit probably got left a decent amount in your will afterwards it's like come on bro let's stop laughing and pretending like what you're doing is hard it really isn't that difficult especially for these guys who have like you know who have um what you call it who have the, the advantage of starting first right of doing something early sorry um so they got in really early in this kind of game they got in early in the game also with the connection to rogan and shit all those things help to, for you to just be on autopilot and not have to really try to make an entertaining show because people are going to be there regardless right even if it you know whatever so what can you do what can you do anyways that has been random show thank you for tuning in appreciate all of you for tuning in been a blast to have you here once again big ups and casey thank you appreciate you there's no freaking way he knows what to talk convert a resort does <laughs> The one thing he knows about probably is vinyl raps. If you ask him about vinyl, I think he knows a lot about vinyl rap because he raps everything, right? So I think he's probably quite knowledgeable about vinyl raps. 100%. 100%. Anything else? I don't think so. He just wants to get the best and greatest. But yeah. Um, big up you, Austin Casey. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, that's me done for the night, my friends. I'm going to clock off. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of The Random Show. Always a pleasure to have your company. Um, if it's your first time checking it out, please make sure you're liking the stream down below. That would be much appreciated. Um, I also need to include, I'm going to do it now actually, I need to include a link for the Discord as well. So if you want to if you want to access the Discord, the link, I think I did, I put it in the stream chat already. I think I did, didn't I, right? I put the link in the stream chat, I think so. But for those of you guys who want to access the Discord, um, the link should be available in the Discord as well. So please join the Discord. That would be great. There's a good little group of people there chatting shit, hanging out and stuff. So if you want to join, please do. Um, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow for an episode of the show. Um, tomorrow, I'll also be doing Taz. I think there'll be a Taz show. F I might, yeah, there'll be a Taz show first. Um, and then there'll also be a random show tomorrow. So keep an eye out for those. I'll get those scheduled up for you. Those of you who like to have things scheduled, I have those scheduled. So I'll do a Taz and a, a random show tomorrow. Um, there's also going to be a new Patreon dropping on Sunday, which is going to be me doing a watch along of Pete Davidson's new um so i said that really african of pete davidson's new um comedy special on netflix so if you want to check that out join the fucking patreon as well it's only one dollar um to start from on there so i'll be doing a live watch along of that on the patreon so if you want to watch that definitely check that out on sunday um and that's about it for now but um thank you for hanging in there appreciate all of you and i cannot wait to see you again tomorrow so thank you for tuning in everybody Peace out. Thank you for hanging. Take care, my friends. Take care.